the Padres with a double dose of good news today. Yonder Alonso, after going eight for 11 his last three games at Tucson, he says he's healthy. He's in the starting lineup tonight with that 284 average. Jerko is back. He's hitting 284. Two games at Lake Elsinore, four for seven. So that right side of the infield, Alonso and Jerko ready to attack tonight. Good news for the Padres as we welcome you to beautiful Petco Park on this Friday night. Game two of the four game series, the San Francisco Giants and the San Diego Padres. And good evening, everyone, along with Mark Crand and Tony Gwynn, Dick Enberg. We're pleased that you're here with us. And indeed, to get those two hitters and outstanding defensive players on that right side of the infield is outstanding news. Absolutely. And, you know, Yonder Alonso had really gotten off to a great start and was really swinging a bat good. And the same can be said for for, 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 for Gorko, too. Having both of these guys back in our lineup is certainly not going to hurt anything. The Padres have been struggling offensively, and now you get a shot of life from two guys who are both kind of professional hitters, kind of understand what they need to do. Really not surprised because they really didn't get a whole lot of time in the minor leagues to kind of get their act together. Both of them were getting hits and swinging a bad well, so this is a big a big shot in the arm for the Padres offense. Jerko brings that good leather to the game as well as a bat that will produce the long ball. Hitting 284 with eight home runs. He still leads the club in doubles and he's only played 60 of the 93 games. So that's the good news in the lineup and a new name, Sean O'Sullivan, a San Diego product up from Tucson. Clayton Richard injured. In fact, he's going to have some surgery. Then Robbie Erlin replaced uh, Richard the last three games that Richard, his name would have come up. And now it's Sean O'Sullivan. Tell us about him. Well, gentlemen, hopefully the two guys you mentioned as far as offense provide some padding for Sean O'Sullivan when he goes out there. Some pretty good numbers in Tucson. When you're seven and four and you've got a 3.8 in Tucson in the PCL, you're throwing the ball pretty well because you can pretty much shave off a point on that ERA. The velocity is there. He told me yesterday he's hit 95, 96 on the fastball. He also throws a two seamer. So hopefully I'd like to see some wiggle room some panic for Sean O'Sullivan early so we can get deep into the game and mom and dad be very happy. For him. You bet. And of course Jerko and Alonzo they have a little uh, game between the two of them. Who's going to get back in that lineup first. Who's going to hit 300 this year. Who might lead in RBIs. Well they are back and that is outstanding news more on their return when we come back.
Petco Park this evening. Not only is it PCL night for the Padres, so they're sporting some awesome uniforms, but the fans are getting these fabulous fedoras that I have on. So a great night all around, and certainly for Buddy Black, who gets not only first baseman Yonder Alonso back, but also second baseman Jed Jerko. Of course, the two went on the DL respectively six days apart, so naturally there had to be a competition as to who got back first, right? It was just, just so happened to, to just get us both back on the same day. You know, we were we were kind of arguing who would come back first, and you know, it happened at the same time. So neither one of us really win. <laughs> we're back at the same time. Yeah, I've been uh, I, I've been giving him stuff for it. So uh, you know, it's all in fun, and, and obviously we're back together at the same time, which is a huge boost. And uh, you know, we're just uh, we're happy to be back, and, and just happy to obviously being being able to play next to each other in uh, first and second. So it's gonna feel pretty normal. So uh, just just happy, man. The big winner certainly has to be the team and the fans who get to see Jed and Yonder both back. That is our Geico quote of the game. And also on the mound tonight for the Padres, Sean O'Sullivan, a local kid taking on the San Francisco Giants in game two. We'll see you after the break. We're set to go on Fedora Night. Fans sporting those new lids, 25,000 of them uh, given away tonight. A big crowd expected. Fireworks to follow the game, and uh, hopefully we'll have some offensive fireworks from that new look Padre lineup. First, we'll uh, check on the Giants. Their lineup brought to you by Hyundai. Gregor Blanco, who has had a good season against the Padres, hitting 481, had three hits last night. Then Marco Scudero on his way to the All-Star game. He'll be joined by catcher Buster Posey hitting third. Pablo Sandoval hit an amazing home run last night. Hunter Pence in right field. Brandon Belt at first base. Kensuke Tanaka in left field. Brandon Crawford the shortstop hitting eighth. And a man who formerly uh, pitched for the Padres, Chad Godin. And uh, he is wearing the black and orange of the Giants tonight as we look at the Padres defense. And they're wearing the PCL uniforms. Quentin Amarista Venable in the outfield. Hedley Cabrera, Jerko, and Alonzo on the infield. Sean O'Sullivan, Bagora, and Nick Hundley behind the plate. I like these uh, PCL Padre nice uniforms. Look. Yeah, love them. Very good luck. First pitch of the game is in for a strike. 
How about the scouting report on Sean O'Sullivan? Well, first of all, I, I'm just so happy for Sean O'Sullivan. Getting to know him a little bit. He's a great kid. Five pitchers, five pitches rather, five weapons, and he's living the dream. As you mentioned, Dick, earlier, a kid as a four-year-old started rooting for the Padres. And the scouting report brought to you by Jaguar of San Diego. He has pitched in the big leagues before with the Angels in Kansas City in the American League. Winning 10 and 14 in his brief time in the big uh, leagues. Fly ball Blanco. Quinton starts the wrong way then comes in to make the catch. He took a couple of strong steps back and then he had to hurry into shallow left for the out. Well we saw him in spring training and uh, he's a big burly right hander high leg kick stays over the rubber nicely. And you can see that change up grip out of the glove here. That's one of the pitches that Sean O'Sullivan throws the two seam four seam. See him turn it over a little bit. A good fielding position out in front for the big right hander. He's 6'1 and 242 pounds. Facing Mark Scudero and that one just misses at 92. Scudero. 313 one of the reserves on the National League All Star team. And handled the bat. Strike barks Mike Winters the crew chief. You know what I thought would have been kind of nice tonight if the Giants were in cahoots with the Padres and they wore San Francisco seal uniforms. Yeah. Going Good. back to the PC. Normally when they do something yeah. like that that's usually what happens right both teams uh, yeah. kind of go back to their throwbacks. How to play one and two. And of course the seals great tradition up there in the San Francisco area. Bruce Bochy five wins away from one thousand five hundred. That's quite a milestone for any manager. Not many have done it. Good breaking ball fouled away by Scudero. Very tight slider right there at 80 miles an hour. Only 19. If Bochi would be the 19th manager to win that many games. Of course, he, many of those logged right here with the Padres. O'Sullivan picked up as a minor league free agent, pitched in spring training. In fact, he pitched in the very first game of spring training back in March. Worked a couple of innings and earned a win. Early on, it just looks like Sean is trying to change his arm angle here. And he's mixed in the changeup. He's you know, trying to locate the fastball. Oh, what a curveball. That freezes Scudero. Right there, straight over the top. Yep. Took a lot off this breaking ball. Split the heart of the plate. Great release point. And that'll make any Norseman from Valhalla High School happy. Nicely done, Sean O'Sullivan. Norseman and El Cajon. He's from a family of five talented family he's got a younger brother also went to San Diego State yep. and was drafted uh, is in the Phil's organization paid uh, pitch for you yeah Brian huh? O'Sullivan is his younger brother both of these kids I recruited Headley gets Posey and it's an impressive first inning for Sean O'Sullivan and here comes Caprera and company for the Padres.
And the first pitch ceremony, uh, Floyd Robinson, who was a PCL Padre back in 1954, graduated from San Diego High School and then signed on with the PCL Padres. Floyd then went on to the big leagues. Uh, I remember seeing him play with the Chicago White Sox. Nine seasons in the big leagues, and Robinson, a good hitter, 283 career average. That Fedora looks great on him, doesn't it? <laughs> He's in the full spirit. Fedora, PCL. <laughs> Dave Winfield. Looking good. Yeah. Well, the Padres lineup tonight brought to you by Toyota, and uh, thank goodness this is the lineup that Bud Black had penciled in at the start of the season. He's getting his players back. Cabrera to lead off, then Amarista will play center field. Cameron Maben, the only man still on that DL from the starting lineup on opening day. Then Chase Headley, Carlos Quinton, Yonder Alonso bats fifth, Jed Jerko sixth, Venable seventh, Hundley eighth, and O'Sullivan ninth. And there's the defense of the Giants brought to you by Hyundai. Tanaka Blanco, Pence in the outfield, same outfit as last night. Sandoval Crawford, Scudero belt on the infield, Posey behind the plate for the 30 year old Chad Godin from Metairie, Louisiana. New Orleans area. And he fires a strike at 89. Cabrera 292. That's the Padres best average. Amarista and then Headley to follow here in the first inning. Slap foul down the left field side. Well, these pottery hitters tonight, guys, are going to get some strikes to swing at. Godin's a pitcher is going to be around the plate. He has faced the Padres in relief, 15 and two thirds innings, allowing 20 hits in those 15 and two thirds, but also striking out 15 a strikeout per inning. He's a spot starter now, just as O'Sullivan filling the void left by Clayton Richard, filled by Robbie Erlin. Woo. Oh, that one got back here in a hurry. Good thing there wasn't someone in that on deck circle. Well, the Padres script on the uniform hasn't changed much since the PCL days. I, I, I like that, that color. A right, little that, red accent. Kept the, the red accent, but more of a cream than a white. It really looks good. Line to Sandoval. So sharply struck by Cabrera, but right to the glove of Pablo Sandoval at third. Well, here's the scouting report on 30 year old right hander Chad Godin. He's a swing man. He swings, baby, from the bullpen into the rotation. He can do both. Each team needs a guy like that. Good pen numbers, and he keeps the ball down. Yeah, Dean Martin, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby Darren. <laughs> Alexi Amarista <laughs> is the hitter. 251 is average. I like the way he's wearing the pants. Yeah, that's old school. It's showing the stripes on the stock and a little bit of stirrup, yeah. too. Yeah. Right. Love it. Makes him look even shorter, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Just did jackknife away from. That ball hitting his knee. 2 and 0 oh to Alexi. See, back in the day, your pants were that long. You didn't have to roll them up, cuff them. You know, they were they were that long. You wore your, your stirrups underneath. You just folded them over. Yeah, exactly. I remember some teams it was mandated that you had to wear stirrups. And so much, Reds. Yeah, yep. the Yankees as well in the minor leagues for many many yep. years. Yeah, today you just wonder how some of the players don't trip over there. I know. As, I know. as the British uh, who come over and see our game say, why do they wear pajamas? <laughs> Sandoval there. You wonder why he doesn't spike himself at third base uh, with a long pajama look. Well, Amarista is the first base runner for the Padres. He earns a walk. And Chase Headley is the batter. Dan only 5'10, 186 pounds. He was a long shot picked by Tampa Bay in the 34th round 12 years ago. Was going to LSU, but elected to sign a small contract and turn pro. And with
with the Padres in 2009 as a starter was four and ten. 19 starts was with San Diego only that one year. Another strike. That's where he has to live right there on the outside corner and knee high. You know the times I've seen Chad go down also when he was with the Padres you know. He just concentrates on trying to keep the ball down if he goes up in the zone it's usually by design. Yep. That last pitch you kind of quick pitch chase Headley right there. So I'm not going to overpower you you know fastballs anywhere you know 88 to 92. But fastball side basically say sinker slider with straight change. Amarista surprisingly does not have a stolen base. One and two. I think he's itching to go, isn't he? He needs a he needs a stolen base. Well, we talked about the hit and run in the instructional in the pregame show. Nicely done, Tony. Yeah, thanks. Well, you know, if you're gonna play it, you gotta trust the guy at the plate to put the ball in play because you can't you can't play hit and run and have swing and misses. That ball sliced to left, a long run for Tanaka, and he can't get there. Foul ball, just a few feet foul. Now the Padres in the midst of this 13 game struggle, winning only one of the last 13, uh, welcoming back some of their starters and uh, with three games before the All-Star break, try to put together a little winning streak, build some momentum for the second half of the year. Exactly. That's what you're that's what you're looking to do. Getting both of those guys back is going to help, no question. You know, both guys are pretty good hitters, pretty good understanding of what they're trying to do. Also, Tony, those two gentlemen there try not to do too much. Exactly. Tonight, right? You know, they're coming off success, you know, in their rehab assignments, but they understand that you know, that's a different level than this sure. level right here. So you know, it's going to take them a couple of games probably to get their strokes together, but. Uh, uh, I expect them not to take that long. One and two. Ground ball off. Bell, it's a fair ball rolling down into the corner, and Amarista's on the run. He's out third. They're waving him in. Here comes the throw. Not in time. Padres lead it one nothing. Well, gentlemen, that's the kind of base that the Padres have not been getting in these last 13 games. A ball that appeared to handcuff belt might have hit the bag, and it becomes a double. Yeah, you're right, Dick. Well, he like waited a, a on the breaking nicely. ball. He waited, stayed back on it nicely, and it just looked like it handcuffed Brandon Belt over there, and it gets down the line, and lets the Reese has never stopped. Looks like he's going to backhand that ball and it just kind of kicks to the inside. You know, Tony, that looks like a, a tough pitch to keep fair. That was a breaking ball on the inner part of the plate, but Chase does a nice job getting his hands through and leveling out that bat to keep it inside the bag at first. Quentin, he goes around. That's a 17th double for Headley, as you saw. He now is tied with Jerko for the lead in doubles. I, I mentioned that because Jerko. Has played only 60 of the 93 games and yet still was leading the team in doubles starting tonight. Number nine back in the lineup. Talk about PCL. He didn't wear number nine. <laughs> Ted Williams with the Padres in the PCL. He wore 19. Familiar number for the gentleman next to me. And I'm sure you know those numbers. That we Talked about a big reason why they decided to make this move today. Why wait? Why have these guys, you know, getting hits down there in the minors? Just bring them to the big yeah. leagues and see if they can get some hits for us up here. And, and before batting practice, I had a chance to talk to Jed, and I said, "Hey, I said 100% right. He goes, not this 98%, not this 90." He goes, "No, I've done all my baseball moves. I've done everything I could, you know." Every position possible, go to my right, go to my left, go back, go forward, out of the box. He goes, it's, a, it's as if the injury didn't even happen. That's how good he is right now. That's a good sign. Yeah, and I got, I got here early. I was watching them all take extra hit in Alonzo, uh, Guzman, Kotze. I mean, they had a, a big group that was out here, and 
and they just worked the ball from from line to line. That's all. They didn't try to do too much. They weren't over swinging. You know, like you, a lot of guys, you're fired up and you want to get back out there and, and launch some ball. They didn't do that. They were just hitting line drives, using the whole field, and that's what you hope they do when they when they get their at bats here in this game. Just hit line drives. That's that's good enough. The rest of it will come. Take batting practice today, not home run practice. Two and two to count. Quentin with his 11th home run a couple of nights ago leads the club. CEO, president, owner, Ron Fowler. Looking spiffy in yeah. that fedora. Fly ball to right field. Pence coming in for it. So halfway Headley and he'll return to second base. Two outs to Yonder Alonso. Welcome back to the former University of Miami All America. <laughs> Terrific turnout on this Friday night. Lots to enjoy. The Fedora giveaway, fireworks after the game, and of course, uh, celebrating the Padres' PCL years. They wore these uniforms from the 30s through. Well, 68 when uh, the PCL Padres became the Major League Padres. 69. Alonzo at 284. He's missed about five weeks with that broken hand. He really came alive at Tucson the last three games, eight for 11. So Bud Black and Josh Burns said, hey, Let's get those eight for 11s up here. <laughs> Let's get the band back together, yeah. huh? That's right. It's like a, a dance band uh, without a drummer and a trumpet player. Now they're back. Make some music tonight. Up the middle. Oh, but Dan took a base hit away from Alonzo. That would have been an RBI single. Bouncing into center field, but go then helps himself. Headley with a double, and the Padres score first. It's one nothing. Here in the second inning, Sean O'Sullivan back out on the mound for the Padres, and Bud Black had a chance to sit down with Sean yesterday and let him know just how excited he was for him to get this opportunity. Very few guys, he says, gets to come back, play in the town they grew up in, for the team they grew up rooting for. And Sean maybe said it best himself, but he said, saying, I get a pitch for my favorite team. It really is a dream come true for Sean O'Sullivan, guys. What a great story. And he starts well, one, two, three in the first inning, Kelly. Pablo Sandoval, 2 0. 
So you recruited O'Sullivan, but not as a pitcher? No, I recruited him as a shortstop. Huh. <laughs> Believe it or not. And, and you know, he, he could really swing the bat. Well, the senior year in high school at uh, Valhalla, he led the entire state of California with 16 homers. He was a really good hitter. Him and his brother both. 617 average, that's pretty good. <laughs> And a four pitch walk and Sandoval is aboard. The Padre walk to Amarista became a run on Headley's double. You don't see that too often, guys. Do you? Four straight pitches, Sandoval not swinging. That's a shocker. Yeah. So much for bad ball hitting. He's aboard for Hunter Pence. Sandoval last night, a walk and a home run, scored two runs, struck out twice. One for four. Pence had a single in four trips, so two for eight for the two of them. The two of them were 11 for 100 prior to last night. That's pretty tough when your four and five hitters just have been totally locked up, unable to contribute much at all, and that explains why the Giants have won only four of their last 20 games. Ground ball foul. Well, the one thing for Sean O'Sullivan I'm going to keep an eye on tonight is the fastball command to the glove side of the right hander, meaning down and away to right handers. If he can do that, he's already shown he can spin the number two up there for a strike. So if he can lo locate that number one down and away and down and into lefties, I think he should have a good night. The head on the count depends, two strikes. Tried to get him to go for something high. Yeah, Buddy Black in that Padre uniform. I wonder if there's a rookie over at Hoover High School. Maybe there's a Williams we could recruit over here for the Major League Padres. Mm, wow. Change up. Pretty good pitch. That was a great change up by Sean O'Sullivan. And it got squeezed. Number four pitch right there. Popped up. Foul territory all first. Alonzo. And he can't get there. Just off the edge of the Padre dugout. Hey, there's Trevor Arroyo from Fox Sports San Diego. He's head of programming. He does a fine job. Had a chance for the souvenir. Yeah. Two balls, two strikes, Hunter Pence. And he slaps that one upstairs. And late on the heater. Fastball he's, he's, catching a lot of the plate. He's throwing him everything this at bat. He's throwing that change up, the overhand breaking ball. Your fastball away. Even a San Francisco fan congratulating that Padre fan on the souvenir. And another foul. Game three tomorrow night, folks, 6 30 here on Fox Sports San Diego. Edinson Volquez, 6 and 7 against Tim Lincecum. 4 and 9 for Lincecum. Cell phone cover giveaway. There's Eddie. He'll be on the hill tomorrow and then uh, Eric Stoltz on Sunday against Barry Zito in a battle of southpaws. Another foul. Lincecum, disappointing season, 4 and 9, 4.61, and that's Zito to his left. They'll be pitching on Sunday, Military Day, U.S. Army celebration day here at Petco Park. So, final two games before the All Star game, a very attractive pitching matchups and Plenty else happening here at the ball yard. Another foul. Tim Flannery skipping rope. Oh, the old second baseman still hot on his feet. Getting out of the way. Tenth pitch coming. This at bat. Five straight foul balls. I think a changeup would be a good pitch here. I was just going to say, I like the changeup better than the breaking ball. Line drive, shortstop, Cabrera back not in time for a double play. So he had Pence out in front, so there wasn't much on that swing. A soft liner to shortstop for the first down. 
Well, it was the curveball from Sean O'Sullivan. It's a big league hang with him for the line drive to Cabrera. Brings out first baseman, left handed hitting Brandon Belt. Padres advanced scouting and pro scouting department watching O'Sullivan last year. He pitched at Las Vegas and had a good season, nine and three and a two seven two ERA. In Las Vegas? In Las Vegas. Wow, those are great numbers. So Pitching they knew he there. was a San Diego kid, would yeah. like to come here. They signed him to the minor league contract, and it's all worked out. He's getting a chance to pitch with a big league club in his home base. Swing and a miss and gets away from Hundley. Not enough for Sandoval to scamper to say, well, he wouldn't scamper, would he? He would rumble. <laughs> you know, that last pitch, guys, with no runner on second base, it looks like Nick Hundley may have gotten crossed up a little bit. Watch his reaction. Oh yeah, that's it, it, maybe he didn't see the sign. Maybe there was a shadow or something. He saw an extra finger or whatever. When he went to have a chat with him, and luckily he kept that ball in front of him. One and one. Line foul. Had it been fair, Alonzo had that big glove ready to snare it. So the news today with Alonzo and Jerko activated and O'Sullivan added to the 40 man roster that required some players leaving and one of them Pedro Siriaco on designated assignment. And Michaelis goes back to Tucson and here they are. Kyle Blanks has been placed on the 15 day disabled list with a sore tendon Achilles. Siriaco designated for assignment. That means he could sign with someone else. The Padres hope he'll stay with the organization, go to Tucson. Miles Michaelis back to Tucson, the relief pitcher, and Sean O'Sullivan now on the 40 man roster, the 25 man roster. Well, the 42. Three balls, two strikes now to Brandon Belt. Lead off walk to Sandoval. He's there at first. Sky view of the action. Runner goes, and the ball is ripped to right field by Belt. And because he was running on the pitch, Sandoval can cruise over to third. First hit for the Giants, and that was a laser to right field for Brandon Belt. Oh, he missed the location. Remember, I was talking about down and away to righties, down and away to lefties. Well, that one leaked down and in, and that was right in the sweet spot. The Dick, there you're talking about the runner going. Sandoval getting the stop sign from Flannery. Well, the first and third actually one out. Still double play in order, though. Yep. Here's runner in scoring position for the Giants. Last night they were four for 14. That is very good considering what they had done the last 18 games. They were 13 for 95 in those games, a 137 average. And it was kind of a breakout game for them. The score for last night is Tanaka sends a high fly ball, shallow and right. Jerko makes the catch and wheels and throws to the plate, and Sandoval has to hold at third. Now, Jerko, as he was running after the ball, he knew that as soon as he caught it, he had to make a play at the plate in case. Wasted no time. Quick footwork and to not because foul fly does not produce a run. Look how Jerko catches, spins towards the glove hand side. Your momentum's going that way and a nice one hopper to Nick Hundley. And I love the old school look on Jerko with the sleeves below the elbow. <laughs> going back old school. Yes. On the uni. A little baggier, aren't yeah. they? These uniforms. They all look like they're about a Two sizes too big. But uh, T Rex. I like it. Brandon Crawford. Fouls it back. 270 his average. Five home runs. He had a, most of those in April. He came out uncharacteristically hitting home runs, but he's settled back into 
more of a line drive doubles hitter. First and third two outs now with the Padres leading one nothing top of the second. Another foul. He's not afraid to throw that change up guys Sean O'Sullivan. And I think that's a good thing have confidence in it throw it any time. Crawford is a rookie at three homers last year a total of four. So he's on a progression three four five in that home run category. Also a lot of foul balls so the pitch counts getting up there next pitch will be number thirty five for Sean. No, his fastball is topped at ninety three. Getting many swings and misses, you know, with his yeah. fastball. The changeup, he's gotten, you know, pop up, he's gotten foul foul balls, but not a whole lot of swing and misses so far. So, fly ball to right, Venable is there, and good pitching by O'Sullivan. First and third, one out, but he denies the Giants. Jerko will lead it off, bottom of the second, one nothing Padres. Near sellout crowd. Game two of the Bob Racing Giants, and uh, it all began in 1936. As memory serves me, uh, Mr. Lane moved the franchise from Los Angeles down to San Diego, and they built the ballpark in just months. And then later, Westgate Park, and they played at Jack Murphy Stadium. Now, Qualcomm became, of course, a major league team, expansion team in 1969. A lot of great players in those PCL days, Bobby Doerr. Vince DiMaggio, Ted Williams. Jerko leads off the second inning. He like Alonso hitting a 284 when they were injured. Now correct me if I'm wrong, gentlemen. Lane Field is near the train station, right? Downtown yeah. by, by the yeah. bay. And Westgate is now where Fashion Valley Mall yeah. stands. Right there by the 163 and the uh, Friars. Correct. Gosh, if I could go back, I love those old ballparks. Said the termites got them though. <laughs> they, were, they were built the wood back yeah. then, right? Yeah, in a hurry. I was thinking as a kid, of course, the, there was no Major League Baseball out here on the West Coast, and you became Pacific Coast League fans. And then their affiliation in the big leagues. Ground ball deep at third. Sandoval with the backhand, and he shows off his arm. 
And of course the biggest name of all was Ted Williams as 17 years old and still a senior at Hoover High School. He signed with the Padres. 140 pounds and 6'3 said I was a bag of bones. And he could hit. And it didn't take long before the Red Sox signed him, sent him to Minneapolis where he won the Triple Crown his first year, still a teenager, and was with the big club at age 19. And he was a thumper even at 17. Up in North Park, his little home now still exists on Utah Street. It's just a block away is a ball field, and that's where he spent his life as a kid. Mom and Dad weren't around much. In fact, uh, we mentioned the other day he was named after Teddy Roosevelt. His birth certificate was Teddy Williams. He didn't like Teddy. He changed it to Theodore Samuel. Samuel was his dad's name. Venable and his mother very active in the Salvation Army and she was gone long days and so he and his younger brother they were often left at home. So what do you do? Fortunately you've got a ball and a bat and you go over and learn how to play this game. And he was obsessed yes. by being a great hitter. Oh Venable caught looking he didn't like the call. Bo Dan has his first strikeout. There's that fastball both sides of the plate down and away to lefties and this one down and in he misses because Posey reaches Oh, did you see him bring it back yeah. a little bit. Time for the Saquon Casino Daycation stat of our game tonight as a member of the Padres in 2009. He tied his career high with 11 strikeouts in a game against the Mariners. Nick Hundley checks in at 241. And what norm, normally when you miss as bad as he missed on that last fastball, no. well, you don't get that call. No. Normally, when you have to reach across. Yeah, the catcher set up catcher on, the on the outside corner, and he hits the inside corner. Normally, you don't get that one. But it was a strike. It was a strike. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. Another foul. Padres with a run in the first inning after Cabrera lined out, Amarista walked, and Headley chased him home with a double into the right field corner. Yeah, I'll be anxious to see O'Sullivan swing his and not getting a chance to do that in the PCL no. because of the DH. And, and you know, we signed with the Angels, they had the DH, and they went to Kansas City, they had the DH. So it'll be interesting to see if word's gotten out that he can swing the bat a little. Fly ball to left. Coming in is Tanaka. And it's a one, two, three inning for Godan. On to the third. Godan will lead it off. For the Giants.
uh, something that's going to be kind of fun here tonight. Well, huh? Dick, I know you love food. I do. Right? I, I love to eat. Well, USA Today, folks. Yes, USA Today. They've got this contest going on. The Stadium Food King. Here's what happens. They're going to have, like, rounds. Round one, two, three, and four. They're looking for the best stadium food. And we all know that Phil's Barbecue is awesome eats here in San Diego. So, Phil's Barbecue is up against the D-back Sonoran Dog. Really? Well, wait a minute. Sonoran Dog, that puts you to sleep, doesn't it? That, that, Sonoran? <laughs> that would you be. don't want to eat those. So, use the hashtag. Round one is Diamondbacks versus the Padres. Let's hear it for Phil's. Yeah, huh? Hubba hubba. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> So you, 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 you uh, vote by sending a tweet that includes hashtag stadium, stadium Food King and the handle of the team you're selecting. So, for instance, obviously San Diego. We love Phil. At Phil's Barbecue SD. To the Food King. To the Food King. Flounder, I elect you social chairman. Uh, Phil's is some kind of nice, too. Sonoran dog. Yeah, you kidding yeah. me? That's going to be a lot for the Padres, yeah, isn't I, it? I believe so. I think that's going to be a runaway. It's already uh, 95% to 5% when my uh, researchers have just told me yeah. that right here in this earphone I got oh, on. You're dialed in. And uh, and we got to pound on them. On that Sonoran dog, we got to take care of that. <laughs> Start looking, go down. Second strikeout for O'Sullivan. They're lined up at Phil's. There, they just recently opened up a store out in Santee. And the El Toro. Now, oh, that, look at that. That is some big league eats right there, yeah. folks. I mean, that's that might be first ballot Hall of Fame going in there. Yep. The food Hall of Fame. Baseball food. They do have some terrific eateries here in the ballpark. Oh, I'm big on the swine too. <laughs> Those Duroc jerseys, huh? <laughs> Greg, Gregor Blanco. Hey, it's Friday night. Can't we have some fun tonight, huh? It's one nothing Padres. Blanco fly to left his first time. Hashtag big on swine. <laughs> Let's see how far that goes out on Twitter. Uh, I bet uh, Milwaukee, they've got to have Bratwurst there. Huh? That'll I be tough to so. beat. That'll be a tough one. And Dodger Dog, i got to give Dodger Dogs yeah. a tip of the fedora. They're good. But no, not Phil's Barbecue. I mean, I'm just saying, second place good. You know, even though it was the pitcher, Godin, up there, Sean O'Sullivan really did a nice job of locating the fastball to get the pitcher to lead off this third inning. We know how important it is getting that first out of any inning. Nice slider. Two and two. Speaking of food, Sean uh, been known to clean his plate and get dessert. In fact, uh, his nickname down there in Tucson, the Nacho. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's what they told me. <laughs> Sean, the Nacho O'Sullivan. Somehow know. it doesn't fit in that. I was going to say, I don't know if he wants that coming out, you know. <laughs> What's wrong While with he's out there on the, on the mound tonight. Just one nacho. I mean, okay. that doesn't hurt you. Just no. one. Not because it's the nacho, not nachos. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> okay, what do we got going here? Nachos, of course. Yeah. Mmm. Get that big hunk of cheese here. Two and two. Ground ball up the middle. Cabrera able to smother it and then try to throw blindly on his back. But Gregor Blanco, he knew he had a no chance, but almost looked as if he's trying to flip it to Jerko and have Jerko throw to first base. But it's an infield hit for Blanco. But again, you see the range of Cabrera even getting to that ball. Yeah. Three hits last night for Gregor Blanco. And you're right, guys. I, I thought that ball was ticketed for center field. A great effort by Everett. <laughs> One out to Mark Scudero. So in the uh, 36, and then I, I first watched Pacific Coast League games in, uh, in the 40s during World War II. Dad would take me down to Gilmore Stadium in uh, Los Angeles. That's where the Hollywood Stars played, or Wrigley Field, where the LA Angels played. The other teams were the Seattle Rainiers, the Portland Beavers, the Oakland Acorns. Sacramento Solons. 
Hollywood Stars, LA Angels, San Diego Padres, San Francisco Seals. And they would play seven games in a series. They would, every team was off on Monday. They'd play single games Tuesday through Saturday, a doubleheader Sunday. So we always went to the doubleheader. Oh, yeah. Second game, seven innings. Get two for the price of one, my Finnish father would say. That's when we're going. Get two games. <laughs> Who didn't love a double header back oh. as a kid going to the ball yard. That was like a double feature at the movies. One and oh to Scudero one out here in the third infield hit for Blanco. Okay, Sullivan goes to the same uh, Barbara you do huh Mark. Yes. We get the two for one deal. <laughs> Just like the double header. No pun intended. I got it too. <laughs> Buddy with the stopwatch there checking the time of Sean O'Sullivan going to home plate. So as soon as the move to the he, he starts the stopwatch on the initial move to the plate. Exactly. See the, the major league average for pitcher to catcher as soon as he comes set and then makes that move to go to the plate. That's when they start the clock and then when the ball received by the catcher. Major Gavage is 1.35. Takes that long to second and three fifth. From there, oh, he moved. Yeah, as soon as he makes that move towards home plate from the set position to when the catcher catches it. So and then, a good move would be what then? Oh, a good move is like 1-1. One, one. Yeah. If you're, yeah, 1-1. One, one, one and a half. If you're 1-5, is that? Oh, that's slow. That's, that's slow. Slow. That's slow. That's very slow. So and you're then, talking about just a yeah. fraction of a second. And then when you look at plays in second base, look at him how many are bang bang, and that's the difference, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, if you get a guy who's one five, you're definitely going to try to run on him. Yes. One and one to Scudero. And again, this is a man that handles the bat well and likes to hit and run, and did last night. Padres outguessed him on one occasion where the shortstop was covering, and the second baseman stayed. They still got the advance of the runner, but didn't uh, have the successful first and third execution. So we talked about pitcher to catcher, right? The average for catcher now to second base throwing down is two flat. So if you've got a catcher that is below two seconds, that's good. Above two, you can run on him. So you put that all together, 3.35 seconds is the average from pitcher's first move. Catcher, catcher down to second base. 3.35 seconds is the average. So if you're around three seconds, you're doing really well. Of course, those base runners and Dave Roberts uh, has all of those right. times. Low two and two. Well, there was none better than getting down there in under three seconds than Mark Sweeney. You know, he oh. could really fly. Yeah, guys, I had to make sure it's right around four. That's my <laughs> comfort level. I can really think of a steal on that back. Timing you with an hourglass, Mark? Oh, yes. Oh, come on. You had some wheels back in the day. I did. In Little League, I, I felt like I peaked. <laughs> there goes the runner and the fly ball to left center field, and that's going to fall for a hit with a runner going. Good job by Amarista to cut it off and hold Scudero to a single. And keep Blanco from coming around to score. Well, that's what you were talking about yep. in the instructional. It's a in essence a run and hit or hit and run. It works. So he stayed back nicely on that big breaking ball. And and when you when the runner is going, you're you're almost like counter punching. You're not trying to dictate the action. You're letting the pitcher decide what he's going to throw, and then you're countering whatever he does. And again, that was a good hit. He stayed back on the breaking ball, lined it in the left center. Blanco able to go first to third and give himself a run scoring opportunity. Yeah, Tony, I thought the best point that you made too is a, a guy that can handle the barrel right. of the bat and understanding that he can, he can handle the barrel of the bat and the manager understands that. First and third, one out, one nothing Padres, and the Giants have their top run producer, Buster Posey. Hitting just under 300 with runners in scoring position, but uh, 317 overall. Leads in home runs and RBIs. And Mark and Tony, that's got to be a mindset as well with a hitter because you might get a hitter who's stubborn and say, oh, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to go with the hit and run. I yeah. want to try to, you know, jerk the ball out of the ballpark or pull the baseball. So it's a mindset thing, right? That's exactly right. You got to, you, you have to be willing to go up there and let the pitcher dictate the action, not you try to dictate the action. 
See, normally when like the Giants and the Padres both are having trouble scoring runs, normally one of the things that you would do is you'd play hit and run. You'd play run and hit. You'd trust your hitters enough to put the ball in play to try to make something happen. But both sides have swung and missed an awful lot here. You know, Dick, you were talking about Pence and Sandoval, 11 for 100. You just can't afford to do that. Fly ball, not very deep. Quentin circling under it. And then Amarista's called off, and the play will be at second base, and scoring the run is the Speedy Blanco. It's tied at one. Sacrifice fly for Buster Posey, his 52nd RBI. Fans, uh, some of them wanted Quentin to make a throw to the plate. I think Amarista thought that he should take this ball. Maybe he thought he got a better angle to throw this. See him cut in front, but Clinton wasn't going to have a shot at throwing the runner out, so he just catches it and throws it to second base. And probably worked out well. It would be unlikely to throw out Blanco with his speed, and then you allow that runner at first right. to go to second. Exactly. On the throw. So Sandoval up, walked his first time. High foul fly. That's way up there. Beware, coming down. Last night, I, I was shaking my head going to bed last night. How could he hit that pitch? A line drive home run. The ball was down and he went out and got it. And hit it out of the ballpark. His ninth of the season. Giants hoping he's going to snap out of a one month slump. Good stop by Hundley. So again Clayton Richard placed on the 60 day disabled list and will have surgery on the shoulder. It's not ligament damage. They're going to shave down his collarbone. It's been impinging on that joint. And he'll recover much more quickly than if there was. Ligament damage. Back to the mound Sullivan able to backhand it and throw out Sandoval. But the Giants get a run on singles by Blanco and Scudero and the sacrifice fly Buster Posey. Today, which of these all star memories is your favorite? Let's go back July 13, 1971. Reggie Jackson hits the rooftop at Tiger Stadium. July 12, 1955. Stan the Man hits 12th inning walk off home run. July 9th, the splendid splinter, the thumper. 1941 hits a home run to win the all star game for the Americans. And then Bo Jackson, July 11th. And the first pitch swung on by the Padres. And into second base with a double goes Sean O'Sullivan. Can he hit? And that was almost Bo Jackson swung and Sean O'Sullivan doubled. He didn't waste any time either.
And his battery made down there in Tucson. Rene Rivera saluting him on that double. He did the. Uh, well, he's never had him that bad because he was in the American League. Major League, wait a minute, he was one for four prior to that swing in the Major League play. That makes the Hall of Famer Tony Gwynn smiling ear to ear. He can hit a little bit now. Good looking <laughs> swing there, T. Helping himself, a leadoff double. 1 1 tie here in the last of the third. Cabrera. Good bunt. Really good bunt. Sandoval gets it. After Godin didn't field it, after a moment, Cabrera might have the base hit. He gets a hand for the sacrifice. A little ball right here. Perfect bunt. Sandoval called Godin off the ball. And O'Sullivan, good secondary lead as soon as that ball was down to the turf, he was off and running to third base. Ben Hopton with a high sock show. Yeah. That ball was five feet from a home run, halfway up the wall. Sound like a homer because he was one of my yeah, guys. But go I'm ahead. telling you, this, he could he could really swing the bat. So you recruited him as an infielder. When did he start pitching? Well, he he pitched also in high school, and you know the pro teams liked him as a pitcher. And so his senior year, you know, we we thought he was going to be a first round pick. He ended up being a fourth round pick. And Marisa trying to get him home. The infield playing halfway, figuring that O'Sullivan doesn't have plus speed. One and one. Amarista walked and scored in the first. Oh, what a feeling for Sean, huh? I mean, he's locked into this game, but he's back in the big leagues playing for his favorite team. Good for him. And the Padres need to reward him by bringing him home, give him a chance to rest. Uh oh. Hop up on the infield. That won't get it done. Whoa! Oh. The ball! Fair ball. Yeah, that's, that's a fair, fair ball. ball. That's a fair that's ball. That's a fair ball. I think that hit the line, didn't it? it Might did. have hit I, the umpire. He's gonna he's calling that foul. I'm thinking that I thought that ball landed in fair territory. Now they're going to rule that foul as third baseman Sandoval and Crawford they were calling and look, look what happened. See where the ball lands. Well the umpire gets hit oh, in the head. On the line. Line. He didn't it's on see the it. line. Look, he's stepping on the spot where the ball hit. That's chalk right there. That's a that's a fair ball. Can they review that? And third base umpire Timmons can, gets so. hit by Crawford, and that prevented Crawford from catching the ball. And in essence, the Padres come out of that at least with another swing of the bat. <laughs> exactly. Be, because if, he, if Timmons isn't in the way, Crawford would have caught it. Yeah. I think this ball hits the line. No question. That's some chalk. chalk. Yeah, pretty tough to see. It's, it's going to work out because normally that ball's caught. And you're down. <laughs> you got a man on third with two outs yeah. instead of a man on third with one. That was a wacky play. Uh, Sandoval was going to catch it. Crawford appeared to be calling him off, and then the umpire stepped into the picture. <laughs> oh, my. Well, another chance for Amarista to get the run home line and out. And the count full. Headley's on deck. Well, oh, just when you think you've seen it all. Well, there's the mark of the ball. I can't believe that it's right there. <laughs> it's right in front of him. Well, Timmons really did have a close look. Yeah. <laughs> Looked like Crawford hit him in behind the head there. Outside. Should be ball four. Yeah, that's ball four. All right, hey, Alexi, that's all you need. Four of those, you get the jog the first. He's walked twice now. Padres came out of that okay. That's yeah. exactly what would have happened had he right. called it fair. Except Alexi doesn't get a hit. So first and third for Headley, who doubled in a run the first time up, right over the bag at first base and through Brandon Bill. The 
Rodan signed in the offseason as a minor league free agent, just as Sean O'Sullivan signed with the Padres. Out of play. And still coming in here. We're in the third inning. Game tied at one. Padres with a chance to regain the lead. I'm still going over that play. I'm wondering, you know, we all make mistakes, but I'm wondering why the umpire was so close to the. He got popped on the back of the head by Crawford, yeah, and then he was trying to get out of the way, so. Yeah, but why is he even in the vicinity? Good call. That's a good question. I, I, and I could be wrong. Uh, maybe that's protocol. I, well, you have a man at third. I suppose he was trying to keep a close eye on third. But he, that, oh, he started. You know what? I apologize. He did start to back up, and then Crawford came from behind him. So I stand corrected. He did try to back up. I think he should have probably tried to get out of yeah. there quicker. One and two now to Headley. But he did. Crawford snuck up behind him, and yeah, exactly. I think scared him because he bumped into him, and then he was really trying to get out of the way. Because I think once Tim Timmons realized that Pablo Sandoval looked like he was going to make the commitment to make, he started to retreat and back off, and that's when Crawford came from behind. So I stand corrected. Swing and a miss, and Headley unable to deliver. A ground ball or fly ball to get that run in from third. So two outs to Carlos Quinton. Quinton fly to right his first time. Well, Tony, it's that slider down and in again. It seems like a lot of pitchers go that way to Chase Headley. Down by that back foot. Especially from the left handed side. Yep. Ball must be kind of hard to pick up from Gaudin because guys have been late on his fastball. And Maurice did first. Sean O'Sullivan has had a long inning on the bases. He's been over a third for quite a while. Just a little high. Quentin had two of the Total of five hits for the Padres last night, an RBI double and a line drive single. Did a home run on Wednesday night, a two run shot against Colorado. Number 11 to lead the club. Change up. One and one. I remember Chad Godin was with the San Diego Padres and He's got a good sense of humor. And I went up to him one day and I said, dude, I said you put a green fedora on you with a clover leaf, you're right on the box of lucky charms. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he is <laughs> got a little chuckle out of it. Green clovers, blue diamonds. Way in the miss. Threw that one by Carlos Quentin. Now that was a fastball up the ladder. Remember we were talking about it earlier? Tries yeah. to keep it at the knees. It's sneaky because guys are late on. It. Exactly. I was just about to say that. That fastball will sneak up on you, especially when it's up the ladder like that. That's where you want to miss. 50th pitch coming up from Godin. Dave Winfield wants to get out there and patrol the outfield. Swing and a miss. Now the Padres first and third. Sean O'Sullivan with a leadoff double. But Headley and Quinton go down swinging.
Padres got a double from Chase Headley in the first inning. And Marista, who had walked, able to scoot around the bases and slide in with the first run of the game. The Giants countered in the third. Buster Posey, a high fly to medium deep left field, and that was good enough to get Gregor Blanco home. He was safe on an infield hit, went to third on Scudero single. So it's 1 1. Padres had a chance to break the tie. Lead off double, Sean O'Sullivan just missed a home run. And after the sacrifice, Cabrera, the walk to Amarista, first and third with one out, but Godin had the right stuff to retire Headley and Quentin on strikeouts. So top of the fourth, Hunter Pence, then Brandon Belt and Kinsuke Tanaka. Out in front. Breaking ball. Slider. Good slider. Well, at age 12, this man on the mound was already receiving national recognition. Baseball America called him the top player in the 12 year old age group in the nation. And went to Valhalla High School and as a senior won 11 games, lost only one. Sliced into right field at fair trouble, and that ball is just foul. Pence, oh, he gets out of that batter's box in a hurry. He was a third of the way to second base by the time that ball carom foul. He looked bad on a couple of sliders, and there, that fastball. He tried to get on top of it, lined it down the line. Unfortunately for him, it was foul. One ball, two strikes. Change up, fly to right center, and Amarista is calling. One away to Brandon Belt. Giants with a run tonight, only their 26th run in the month of July. So that's 10 games, and this being the 11th, only 26 runs. That's the fewest scored by any major league team. So Bruce Bochy's team struggling. They start tonight six and a half behind Arizona, 41 wins, 50 losses. Unusual run of defeats for the Giants. Been doing that the last few years. Only their starting pitching is so good. Lincecum, Kane, Vogelson, Zito. Zito. And the guy we saw last night, Bumgarner. Yeah, Bumgarner. So we, they've had some injuries. That's in there. One and two. But like a lot of teams, they just haven't hit. They haven't hit as well as they thought they would, too. Kitchen hasn't been as good. The defense hasn't been as good. Still have to put some runs on the board in order to win. Struck him out. Series of all speed deliveries. Sean O'Sullivan gets built for the third strikeout. A good breaking ball right there. Not really wanting to throw it for a strike. Quite apparent that Belt is a fastball pitcher. Fastball hitter. Right? Kensuke Tanaka had a couple of hits last night. Big hit in that eighth inning off Luke Gregerson that contributed to the two run eighth inning that broke the 2 2 tie and gave the Giants a 4 2 win. Fouled the first, his initial at bat with a man at third and one out. Two and oh. That was surprising to me. He came up there. Tanatsuka swung at the first pitch he saw where you know, last night he had at bats like these where he'd gotten ahead in the count. And now you could kind of kind of hunt for something that you're looking for. Fastball strike at the letters. 
Dick and Tony down near the dugout and seeing o Sean O'Sullivan work. He's he's got real good arm speed with his breaking balls. Also changing speeds with that with that slider and good breaking ball. But also that change has been devastating for him tonight. Three balls and a strike. Bases empty. Two out in the Giants' fourth. Edinson Volquez pitching and hitting. Imitating Tanaka. Ground ball up the middle. Jerko smothers, but can't throw him out. Tanaka just didn't get to the bag in time, but what a play by Jerko. Did everything he could. And thought it was an out. Ranges far up the middle and from his knees, strong throw. Here's a better look at the bang bang play. I think he was safe. Fourth hit for the Giants and Jerko, his presence presence being felt here early as he returns to the lineup with his range and effort. Just doesn't get the out. Line drive, right center, base hit. Brandon Crawford. Tanaka, for some reason, stops at second. With two outs, you would have thought he might be able to get over to third on that sharp line drive. So with two outs, singles Tanaka and Crawford, and here's Godin. Looks like a change up Crawford. He his ball in the right center field, and yeah, I don't know why Tanaka wouldn't try to go to third. So Pence flight out belt struck out. Tanaka beats out the infield hit. Crawford with a solid single. Go down. 0 for 12 this season. Starts in with a breaking ball. Headley has to back off or better hurry, and he just does get Crawford at second base on the fielder's choice. No runs, two hits. They leave two more. Padres coming up. Yonder Alonso back on active duty and Jerko to follow him. Joining me now, Paul O'Sullivan, Sean O'Sullivan's dad, the starter tonight for the Padres. Could you have ever dreamt you would be saying, my son, the starter for the Padres tonight? When they're kids, you, you, they all dream of playing for their hometown team, and, and this is really a dream come true for him. I've seen him play professional games before, but it's really weird seeing him out there. It's, 
It's cool, but it's strange. What was the thought that went through your mind when you watched him run out there onto the mound? Well, I actually got here late because I couldn't find a parking spot. So, but I mean, I couldn't be on the prodder. If that ball had gotten a couple more feet out, that would have been even better. But uh, he looks great. He looks comfortable. You know, he looks happy. That's the most important part. So you're not concerned so much with the pitching. You're more impressed so far with the hitting. I love watching him hit, but uh, he's doing a good job. He looks, you know, he doesn't look nervous. He looks like he's in control. Um, you know, so I'm really happy for him. I know you're really close with all of your sons. You've got four of them that have gone through. And just in terms of, of seeing Sean tonight, what makes you most proud? Uh, I'm most proud of the person that he is. Not so much the ball player he is, but the person that he is. Uh, but, I mean, it's been over a year since he's been in a big league club, and he's worked really hard. You know, when he first came up, he was pretty young, and he had some success, and he had some, some hard times, but he's figured some things out and worked really hard to get back here. Doing great tonight. Enjoy this one, Paul. Thank you. Guys, back to you. All right. Thank you, Kelly. Paul was going to be a proud grandfather soon, too, in the next couple of weeks. Is Sabrina, his wife, expecting shortly her first child. Yonder Alonzo off the fist, a soft fly ball behind second, and Scudero takes care of business, one away. Yeah, the boys, it's a very talented family, the O'Sullivans, as Tony already indicated. Ryan, the brother, right handed pitcher, 22 year old, he's in the Phil's organization. There's another brother that is a junior Olympian in judo, and then the youngest of the lot is playing Little League ball. Well, there are more coming. Mm -hmm. Jerko takes a curveball for a strike. Grounded to third on his return to the active lineup. Oh. Oh and 2. Go Dan O'Sullivan. Two players that went to spring training last year, minor league contracts, and both have worked their way to the bigs. It just goes to show if you're willing to work hard and have some perseverance and stick to itiveness, that you could get back. You know, obviously you have to get some opportunities. The opportunity has to come your way. Another ground ball to third, and this one is foul. Foul ball called by plate umpire. That's his call, Mike Winters. Well, Godin is 30, so he's had his chance. In fact, he's been with eight major league teams, but continuing to persevere, and the Giants sign him, and he's come out of the bullpen to give them a couple of really good starts. But O'Sullivan's only 25. I mean, he's got uh, the prime of his career is ahead. You know, Dick, that's such a good point, but it's all about putting that uniform on, that big league uniform. Hanging in your locker and that feeling of the pressure of staying there so many times, whether you're the 24th or 25th guy on the roster. Go down swinging Jerko continue. And that is something that you have to put pressure on yourself. Yes, you might have to go down to the minor leagues, you might have to persevere to get back, but that drive of getting back to the big leagues and this excitement playing in front of all of these fans is such a great. Emotional high for everybody. That's what keeps him in the game. And yeah, now he gets a taste tonight. Wearing the PCL Padres uniform. Will Venable took a third strike his first time. Four strikeouts now for Gotan. He's walked two. Allowed only the one hit, the double by Headley. So in almost 13 full innings, the Padres have only six hits off Giants pitching. They're Collected only five last night off Baumgartner and company. Rosario and Romo finishing the 4 2 win. I like the blue and gold. I like the blue uniforms, but I must say, I really favor these. I like the navy blue with the red trim. Maybe it's black. We have to get down there close to see what exactly what color that is. It looks like it's navy blue. Yeah, navy blue with red pinstripe, and it, they are beautiful. And I love the high socks. Like Take talking stirrups. about that. It's sweet look. Navy blue with red trim. You have a single 
red S on the helmet. Now, if you took the, the current logo, and I like the SD logo, and put that in red on this uniform, I might take one of those home from the shop. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, we can work that out. You go up to the gift shop up there. Fly ball left field, racing in Tanaka. And a one, two, three inning for Chad Godin. We go to the fifth, still tied at one. Ron Fowler and company down in the box seats and the entire O'Sullivan clan here to root for Sean, the starting pitcher tonight, called up from Tucson. Again, he's in the rotation tonight. Robbie Erlin had three starts, replacing Clayton Richard. Robbie back down to Tucson and O'Sullivan earning his way up with a good effort in the PCL, winning six and losing only two of his last eight decisions. 75 pitches. Gregor Blanco leads off the top of the fifth. His infield hit led to the giant run, third inning, with one out. Single up the middle, infield hit. Scudero and a hit and run took him to third, and Posey sacrifice fly tied the game. Blanco last night, two singles and an RBI double. So he is. Four for seven in the series and hitting almost 500 against the Padre pitching this year. Mm. Well, Sullivan wanted that one. Yeah, a little two seam action down and away. Didn't get the call there. And Gregor Blanco has been, uh, been a tough out. Three knocks last night, a single and a run here in the third. Change up. Not biting. And the count goes three and one. This is a man you don't want to put on with his speed. Well, Sullivan's control has been good. One, only one walk. Three strikeouts. Love of Hundley, it's three and two. You know, even though that not that's not caught right there, uh, I think Sean O'Sullivan does a nice job of trying to bury that fastball inside. That's a good sign. Not let Blanco get extended with those arms. Follow that.
Yeah, I'm sure running the base is kind of taking a little bit out of Sean O'Sullivan as well. See his britches are a little dirty there from running the bases. Slide into second base. Yeah, one more uh, by the Wheaties uh, this morning, and uh, he wouldn't have been running the bases. He'd have been jogging with a home run. He just missed it. And the leadoff walk to Blanco. Well, Mark Sweeney's down by the Padres dugout. We're all big fans of the third base coach of the Giants, Tim Flannery, huh, Mark? Yeah, we are, and it's all about passion for Tim Flannery. But what I love, most third base coaches don't wear their spikes at third base. That's the most important thing. He calls it his nails. He's into it. He knows he has to move <laughs> around, and that is the excitement part. He is into every ball game, as you know, Mark. And Tim Flannery, it's all about passion. We love him. You know the first time I experienced and witnessed that firsthand was when I got traded from the Padres to the Braves in 1990. Uh -huh. I met the club in Atlanta and Bobby Cox comes out in the dugout and I hear click 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 and I said Bobby are you wearing cleats he goes Mark you never know when I'm going to have to pitch run and it's the first time I've ever seen a coach or a manager wear the nails it was awesome. Pitch out and no action from Blanco. 2 0 oh now the count to Scudero. Well, we saw it last night, guys. Perfect position to have a hit and run right yep. here. Sean O'Sullivan has to throw a strike. And they need runs. That's why they want to try to put people in motion. You know Scudero likes to go the opposite way, Dick. Let's see if uh, second baseman there, Jerko, holds his ground if something is, in fact, on. Two balls in a strike. And a lot of it has to do with a two strike approach, too. Marco Scudero doesn't mind hitting with two strikes, so they can put it on in this situation as well. Yeah, 2 1, 1 1, 2 0. Oh. Might see O'Sullivan throw over here. Maybe a long set and then a quick throw over to first. Lead off walk to Blanco. Tied at one here in the fifth. I think he might have been leaning a little bit that time. He has nine steals. And again, O'Sullivan, you know, long set maybe, and then incorporate the slide step here. That might be a possibility as well. He goes. Line drive foul. Just missed. Good play made by the ball girl down there. That was a tough out. And it was a slide step from Sean O'Sullivan. And he gives it to a Buster Posey fan. So many times we talk about the hit and run today in our instructional. And as for the hitter standpoint, you have to protect the runner. So you have to swing. You're trying to make contact. So you can protect the runner. The runner's just set in motion from first base. Now the count two and two. We'll see. If Blanco stays and the ball foul back. And Mark, to your point, we've seen it many times, and Dick, you've seen it as well. On a, if the other team on the field, they're, they're sniffing it, right? So they pitch out. You got to throw your bat at the ball. Yes, you do. You got to throw it at it and hope you foul it off and, and protect that runner, like you're saying, Mark. Yeah, it's difficult to do that too. You're looking for that strike or that breaking ball. That's it's very difficult, but you have to control the barrel of the bat. Even choking up is a method that the hitters will use as well. Blanco goes. Throw by Hundley into center field. And Marista backs it up. Blanco has his 10th steal. And a walk and a steal. As good as a leadoff double for the Giants. Jed Jerko played that one perfectly. There was no way he was going to get this ball that's airmailed by Hundley. Watch Jerko. He's a, he's going down with the tag to the runner, keeping the runner at second base, and Amarista coming in to back up. That's the old decoy, Mark Sweeney. And I like it too. And it's all about the body language because as a runner, when you're sliding in, you can see their mannerisms as a fielder, and that helped right in that situation. Well, the last three games here at Petco. And another walk. So a couple of walks here in the fifth to open the Giants frame with a 1 1 tie. That last game against Colorado, 
eight of the nine innings they had runners in scoring position. Last night the Giants six of the nine innings they had runners, and tonight four of the five innings the Giants had runners in scoring position. So a lot of opportunities, and the Padre pitching has been tough under pressure. But Colorado won five to four, Giants won four to two. Well, Tim Stauffer starting to heat up here in the fifth inning. A lot of dialogue between Darren Ballsey, the pitching coach, and manager Black. Pitch counts getting up there. Next pitch for Sean is 90. Posey, way outside. Well, Sean O'Sullivan maybe falling off a little bit on that first base side, not having that momentum go towards home plate. This visit will also give some time for Tim Stafford to have some more tosses in the bullpen. Well, guys, not only is it a tough situation for the order for against O'Sullivan, but also the pitcher spot up second. That's the reason why there's a lot of dialogue in the Padres dugout. Yeah, who to double switch with, possibly? If in fact they go that route. Posey a ground out and a sacrifice fly tonight. 89 on the fastball. He was at 93 earlier in the game. Yep. It's just going to make that point, Dick. The velocity starting to drop a little bit. We mentioned earlier falling off towards the first base side. Let's see here. Out in front. That's a good finishing point right there for Sean. Two and one. Looks like he may be starting to labor a little bit. Well, 92 pitches, all the emotion spent in coming out back to the big leagues here in San Diego. Family watching that pressure. On the bases with the double, all adding up. Posey grounds to short. Cabrera, Jerko, Lonzo, a double play. Oh, the good old 6 4 3 for Sean O'Sullivan. Could not come at a better time. Nice breaking ball, and because Posey does not run well, plenty of time on the turn. Remember, it has to start with a good feed to the second baseman, right to the chest of Jerko. And we know how good Jet is around the bag. Nicely done, gentlemen. On the double play, Blanco moving to third, two out now to Pablo Sandoval. He has walked. And bounce to the mound with a number that was just to the third base side of the mound that O'Sullivan took care of. Fastball at 91 for a strike. Boy, if he could give the Padres five innings, leave it at 1 1, I think that'd be a pretty nice night for Sean O'Sullivan. And to give him a, a chance to pick up a big league win as yes. well. Yes. If he can uh, get Sandoval, keep the score tied at one, and hope the Padres can do something bottom of the fifth. See a ball do that very often. Yeah. Chopped off home plate and went directly over the head of the catcher. Humley. You know what? If I was Nick Humley on that one, I would have let it bounce one more time. Because there's going to be back well, you, never, you never know what type of spin is on it. It might roll fair. You're right. Pick it up, tag it. There was unusual spin, English on it, because it took such a crazy bounce off. I think it was right off the tip of the Pentagon. Right. Yeah, it looked like Sandoval was looking breaking ball there and had to adjust to the fastball. Late swing by Sandoval. He's not late on this one. If it's fair, it's trouble. It is gone off the wall. And the run scores. And Sandoval into second base as he pulls it to the short part of the yard, right down at the foul pole. And Pablo has done it again. Home run last night, a double tonight. So the walks pay off for the Giants. Well, one pitch from getting out of it, and that's a slight. You know, Pablo Sandoval, Mark Sweeney, he does such a good job of taking pitches on the inside part of the plate, fastball, breaking ball, in some way, shape, or form. He has the ability to keep it fair. He did it right there. 
big clutch hit for the Giants. Yeah, Mark, he has a big body transfer forward, but he keeps his hands back enough and he just flicks his wrist. Very strong man, especially in that dish. Right off the head of that Taylor made uh, driver sign in right field, about 10 feet fair. He winds up at second. His 41st RBI, and here's Hunter Pence. Is that the hidden ball trick there? Cabrera had the ball to fool me. And apparently time had been called because Cabrera did tag Sandoval. He thought he had the out. Sandoval looks at him and says, Come on now, don't be doing that to me. It would work because you got the pitcher off the mound. He has to be off the circle. But now he steps up on the mound, and Cabrera had the ball all the time, tagged Sandoval. But by that time, Sullivan had stepped up on the mound. If he had stayed back of the circle, on the grass, that would have worked, the hidden ball trip. But you have to be off the circle. Two strikes on Pence. Right now, if he stayed, but see, O'Sullivan walks back up in the mound. Now, no play. And if he had gone to the rubber, it would have been a ball. Hundred pitches now for Sean O'Sullivan. Three-two Giants. Walk to Blanco, walk to Scudero, the double play, Posey, but Blanco moves to third and scores on Sandoval's double. Rattle just inside the foul pole and right. Two and two. Mark Sweeney down by the dugout. I understand you said that the bat boy was had some interaction out there. Yeah, he actually they called timeout because he had to go out and give him a hand brace. For it when he's when he's running the base path, so gotcha. yeah, they had to call timeout previously okay, before so that play happened. That negated everything. Time had been called. That how long it's been since the old hidden ball trick? That would have been interesting. Try three call. Now Sullivan gives up a couple of walks and a run, and the Giants lead three two.
Diego brought to you by your San Diego County Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a luxurious Lexus automobile today. By Petco, where the healthy pets go. By Farmers Insurance, contact your local agent at 888-96-FARMERS. And by the Experience Buick Lease. It's a new lease on luxury. Pablo Sandoval's double with two outs in the fifth, giving the Giants the first lead of the game, 3-2. And now it's the Padres' turn. Nick Hundley leads off, flies that one down the right field side, slicing into foul territory. Pence, watch out. That ball out of play. Hundley, the pitcher spot. And then Cabrera, from Sean O'Sullivan. As one of the two hits tonight, the Padres' two hits are both doubles, Headley and O'Sullivan, who just missed a home run. Hit it to deep left center, halfway up the wall. So he's such a good hitter that even if he's coming out of the game as a pitcher, that but Black can use him instead of a pinch hitter. Ground ball weakly up the middle, and Crawford there to throw him out. Well, you know what? Uh, Sean O'Sullivan tonight, he battled. I mean, he threw a lot of pitches, close to 100 pitches, kept his team in the ball game, and he was very frustrated after that last inning of work. He's going to hit here, probably so Buddy doesn't have to burn a position player on the bench. Hey, maybe he'll hit one out, tie it up. <laughs> <laughs> Just missed the first time. He'll be pitched more carefully, I'm sure, by Godin on this occasion. And indeed, he didn't give him a fastball to start. He's now two for five as a major league hitter. Another breaking ball, 0 and 2. Yeah, take lots of pictures. You betcha. Father Paul focusing on Sun. Just in case he tags another one. Ooh. Wide strike and O'Sullivan caught looking. Five strikeouts now for Godin. Two away. For Godin now. Has retired seven in a row. Our cold hard fact brought to you by Frostbrood Coors Light. Everett Cabrera is the third Nicaraguan born to be selected to play in the All Star game, a first position player. The others, Dennis Martinez, Vicente Padilla, the pitchers. Martinez uh, several times an All Star. El Presidente, Dennis Martinez. Oh, that guy had a hook. Cabrera's line to third, sacrificed the last time. That was after O'Sullivan doubled. He sacrificed him to third, but Padres couldn't get him home. Well, Godin pitching himself a good game. Mm -hmm. Just the two doubles, two walks, five strikeouts. And only 70 pitches, 70th coming up. With a breaking ball. Over the mound. Going to be a tough play now for the second baseman, Scooter Row, but he is able to make it. And another 1 2 3 inning for Godan. It's 3 2 Giants.
Padres sporting their Pacific Coast League Padre uniforms and the fans uh, enjoying the fedoras, the straw hats that were given away tonight. Here's our Twitter poll results. Uh, All star memories. Well, most of you uh, liked Reggie, 40%. Usuals, home run, a winner, Ted Williams, also at 23%. Didn't really get to see all the Bo Jacksons because uh, Sean O'Sullivan's near home run was uh, matching the swing. David Winfield, looking very dapper in that <laughs> straw hat. Yeah. Well, you know that home run that uh, Reggie hit in Detroit. That game had like 14, 15 Hall of Famers in it hmm. in Detroit. I think Hank Aaron homered right, that night. Right. Roberto Clemente homered that night. Wow. And uh, and it was one of those games where we had practice, and I'm rushing home trying to get there so I can see the lineup <laughs> on the line. It was uh, an awesome memory. Uh, Tim Stoffer comes in. Sixth inning to face Brandon Belt, Tanaka, and Crawford. So Sean O'Sullivan, you can't quite give him an A grade, but you got to give him a passing grade for his five innings of work. Allowed two runs, or three runs rather, and two runs and six hits. Padres one run, two hits. Two earned runs, six hits. He walked three, and one of those walks came around to score to break the one one tie. And struck out four. He, he just plain battle tonight. Yeah, I think with Sean, the biggest issue will be can he be efficient? You know, tonight for a lot had, of pitches. Yeah, a lot of pitches. They only went five innings tonight, and for him to have success at this level, he's, he's going to have to be efficient and work ahead, not walk guys. Belt going for a new bat, two and one the count. Belt has singled and struck out. But not a bad first game here with the Pots. No. Stopper making his 20th appearance out of the pen. That's one win, no losses, and a 393 earned run average as the long man. Yeah. Oh, that one misspelled. How did that not hit him? Nearly got him in yep. the armpit, looked like. Got him out of there. Look right out. Up at the end. Almost hit Fido right in the chops behind home plate on that Petco sign. <laughs> Full count. Yeah, he did. Yep. Punched out by Timmons. Right out for Stalker. Oh yeah, he did. Well, wait till he swings. Uh, I could have told you right when the ball was. Uh... Yeah, he... <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Can we guess one now and then? No, Tony? Uh, no. <laughs> Throw him a crumb. <laughs> He'll be smiling for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't take much. Tanaka. Yeah, they all have their music. Uh, the players, when they're introduced in Japan, they play Tanaka, Tanaka, I love you, Tanaka. <laughs> Professor! One for two tonight. Boy, boy, we got from get... Annie! Yeah, there you go. That is from Annie, the Broadway show. Gotta get the offense going. Yeah. Need to rattle those bats Try down to there. Do something. Get Annie Warbucks down there and rattle those bats. You could play Daddy Warbucks. You got the the look. Runs up as if to punt. Now the count three and one. Able to pull back. Is it just me, Tony? But all the hitters coming from Japan, it seems like that their pose, the yeah. way they hold the bat, have it pointing almost straight up. They all and that kind of that little lean yeah. knee free. Hmm. All four. So 
A one out walk Tanaka. Hey, coming up this Tuesday, the date, July 16th, baseball's greatest stars gather in the most exciting city in the world for the biggest event of the summer. Baseball's Midsummer Classic returns to New York with home field advantage for the World Series on the line. It's the 2013 Major League Baseball All Star Game live from New York, Tuesday, only on Fox. Get your All Star Game fix on Fox. Well done, Mark. Thank you, sir. Three of these Giants will be going. Madison Bumgarner, the pitcher we saw last night. Mark Scudero and Buster Posey. And the Padres, Ever Cabrera. Crawford single last time up. He's one for two. Dan is scheduled next. Here's Mad Bum, Madison Bum Garner. Just 23. Looks 33. And pitches like he's 33. <laughs> nice. That's a nice job. He gave him three hits in the first inning and not much after that. Never gets rattled. In control. Giants got them a good one there. And 16 straight outs from the first inning to two outs in the sixth. Foul off to the left. The place is pretty well packed tonight. Yeah. Well over 40,000. Big crowds expected again tomorrow night. Edinson Volquez and Tim Lincecum. 6.30 for our telecast here on Fox Sports San Diego. And then on Sunday, Military Sunday, saluting the U.S. Army. Line drive into the right field corner and foul. Tanaka returns to first base and it's one and two on Brandon Crawford. Eric Stoltz who's done a fine job. He's been the Padres top pitcher here of late seven and seven goes against Zito four and six on Sunday. And then the all star hiatus for most of the players. Stoltz. Chop to third by Headley, fair ball into the corner. Tanaka races to third and into second with a double is Crawford. So second and third for the Giants trying to add to their 2 1 lead. Tailing the fastball by Stauffer. Crawford goes right with it this time. Going to try to get that on the short hop and get the line. I really thought Chase had a chance at that. That ball looked like it kicked over his glove. It looked like he got to it at the time, just couldn't get the glove there. And go Dan with a two to one lead. He'll be up there with the infield drawn in. Try to cut off this uh, runner to knock at the plate. And he wasn't going to bump there. Let's see whether or not Bruce Bochy goes to a little safety squeeze with the pitcher up. But Dan has not collected a hit all year. He's 0 for 13. Look at his lifetime average. In fact, he is in his career in the big leagues as a hitter. He's 1 for 53. So that might not be a bad call. You know, the safety squeeze, the runner doesn't have to go. He goes when that ball is off the bat and he sees it hit the ground. Suicide squeeze, as soon as that pitcher lifts that leg, you are going no matter what. Safety squeeze, you got to make sure that ball is bunted fair, and then you take off, try to score that run. One and one. Use the squeeze much with, with the Aztec? Not very much. I, I like to let him swing the bat, but you know, we, we ourselves had a rut like the Padres are in right now, and runs were at a premium, and so yeah, you'll take a shot at trying to squeeze a run in or safety a run in. Makes good contact there. Late on the swing fouls it. On a line.
Second and third, one out here in the Giant sixth. Well, you can easily tell what kind of hitter the pitcher is by the marks on his bat. I was just going to say that's a very clean <laughs> that bat. bat. Is clean, is <laughs> not a mark on it. Outside, two and two. No, no, no pine tar on the handle, oh. nothing. Knock at third. Crawford with a double at second base. Leadoff hitter Blanco on deck. That away. Well, we know that Del Mar and the Thoroughbreds will be running beginning on Wednesday on the beautiful Del Mar racetrack where the turf meets the surf. And uh, Tim Stauffer is from the other big race community for the summer up in Saratoga. So Eastern horses, all the big Thoroughbreds go up to Saratoga at the same time the Western runners are here at Del Mar. Final. Oh, he's battling. Yep. You know, the infield there, the philosophy of the pitch is just, you know, we talked about it quite a bit, just play a game of pepper. Yep. If you hit it one of the infielders, oh, okay, well, at least you, you give yourself a chance by putting the ball in play. Try to avoid the strikeout. Exactly. That's that's bottom line. Just trying to put the ball in play. But for a guy one for 53s, then tough. There's the strikeout. Second for Stauffer. Brings up Blanco. Looks like a changeup. Oh, it's a changeup down and away. Runners in scoring position and two outs. Blanco hitting 344. Had three hits last night, knocked in the run, scored a run. A hit in the walk tonight, he scored two. All all the scoring for the Giants, both runs. Second and third. So for a leadoff hitter, those are good numbers. Runners in scoring position. Scudero on deck. Tanaka third. Crawford at second. Good all those fedoras. <laughs> it's like old school, go back in time where everybody wore a hat, right? Yeah. Ball game? Yeah. That was the way you dressed when you went to the, the baseball games in the 30s and 40s, even into the 50s. Three and oh, and it doesn't get easier. The man on deck is All Star Mark Scudero. Crawford didn't want to give in there. Two oh, throw him a fastball, throw him a two oh changeup. Ball four, four pitch walk. Oh, that miss. Two walks given up by Stauffer here in the sixth inning. Bases now loaded. Two outs for Scudero. Aaron Balsley going out to the mound. He's at the old school look. Here's the last pitch we were talking about. Remember Posey got one of those calls earlier in the game when he was set up away and reach across inside. Tim Stauffer got squeezed on that one. So this is a big. At bat in this game, 2 1 contest, Giants lead, but bases loaded and a 3 13 hitter stepping up. We have right handers off of Tim Stauffer are batting at a 288 clip. Tim's got to think down here, work for a grounder early. You get the two strikes, then think about the strikeout. 
One for two, raising his average. You know, that's where the base is loaded, 316. So he's about the same. He's yep. a 313 hitter coming in. He's 316. Base is loaded. Just a tough out. These are situations where you don't you don't like to face a guy, a contact guy in this kind of situation because you know he's pretty disciplined. He's not probably not gonna swing at nothing out of the zone. He's gonna make you come in the zone, and we've seen already in this series. With his back control, he can move the ball around. Mm. Brad Brock flying in the bullpen, and Stauffer falls behind 2 0. Oh. Didn't miss much with that one. And now word comes through that the game tonight officially a sellout here at Petco Park. Great to see. Seats all filled, and the park of the park is jammed out there in right center. Ground ball up the middle. What a play by Cabrera, but they don't get the out. A run scores. He saved a run, did Cabrera, and then tried that backhanded flip and almost got it to four sides for a force. That would have been spectacular. But he saved a run. Scudero with the infield hit gets Tanaka in from third. Another walk is scored. Okay, tried to get to the bag, but couldn't couldn't get there. Really, that was Cabrera's only play right there was to try to get the force at second. But like you said, Dick, that is a huge run that they kept at third base there. Him preventing that ball from going to the outfield. But Stauffer trying to weave his way through this minefield with a couple of walks helping uh, the Giants to get another run. And the base is loaded to dangerous Buster Posey. Rounded out, sacrifice fly. Grounded into a double play the last time. Crawford now at third. Blanco at second and Scudero at first. Mm. Good save there by Hundley. So two of the three runs for the Giants tonight. Men put on for the free pass. Blanco led off the fifth inning for the walk. He scored. Now here in the sixth. Couple of walks. One has scored. And 2 0 and oh in this big crowd. The Padre fans look getting a little nervous. Sandoval on deck. Posey in the catbird seat here. Sit on a 2 0 pitch. Swing if he likes it. Fastball laid off that. It took it. 2 1. Loaded again with Giants. Rodgers picks out of a couple of bases loaded jams last night. Line to right, base hit. Two more runs will score on uh, Buster Posey, single to right center field. And the Giants now lead five to one. Crawford from third, the other man who's walked in the in inning, Blanco from second. And Posey delivers again. The leading RBI man picks up two more. The fastball up in the zone. Good he didn't try to do too much with it with the right center. You know, I look at that pitch, I look at that swing. That's a lot of balls that guys will pop up to right center field. He got on top of that ball. Sent it on the line to right center. Stoffer unable to get the final out in the sixth inning as the Giants have scored three.
Reminder, be at Petco Park Sunday, July 14th, coming up in a couple of days. U.S. Army Appreciation Day presented by USAA. Enjoy a special pregame ceremony honoring the men and women who serve in the United States Army before the Padres take the field against these Giants. First pitch is at 110. Get your tickets tonight, tomorrow at Padres.com. Or get on the horn, 619-795-5555 this Sunday. Show your appreciation for the U.S. Army. That waterfall effect uh, near the main entrance to Petco Park, uh, one of the many outstanding uh, pieces in the design of this new bowl yard. Well, Brad Brock trying to get out of this sixth inning. The Giants with three runs on three hits and a couple of walks. Eighth man to bat is Pablo Sandoval. Brock takes over with runners at first and third, two gone. Sandoval has walked and doubled in the run. Posey in front of him has knocked in three. Big swing. Sandoval doubling off the wall just inside the foul pole and right. Last time up. That uh, broke the 1 1 tie. Padre scored first in the first inning and walked Amarista and Headley's double. But they have only one hit since, and that was by the pitcher, Sean O'Sullivan. Posey with three RBIs tonight at first base. Scudero at third. Brock up and down with the Padres to Tucson and back. This is his 24th game of the year. That's in there. Fastball right at the hands. Good pitch. Two seam action. Kind of straightened them up a little bit. Gets the call in the inside corner. How would you pitch to Sandoval? I'd go hard stuff in, soft stuff away. Take my chances. Up the ladder. I'll take my chances with a high fastball out of the strike zone. I mean, he's hitting every. There. He got him blowing away. Soft stuff. Or no, I'm sorry. Two seam fastball. So the inning comes to an end, but the Giants sent eight to the plate. Three of them score, and they now lead by four. As the Giants have taken a 5 1 lead, and time for our Fan Diego fan of the game. Jeez, look at oh this. my goodness. Pin man. It's like a yeah, it's like a cape with all those pins. That thing was way about 18 and a half pounds. Looks like a gentleman that's gone to a lot of events, maybe some uh, Olympic games. Of course, that's a yeah. big business at the Olympics, uh, trading for pins yeah. from the various countries. Wow. I've got some good ones back in a 
shoe box somewhere. I got to check out from say 1972 oh, when yeah. I was in Munich. I got to try to find those. Alexi Amarista has walked both at bats. Scored the run in the first on the Headley double. Lines that one to center field for a base hit. Well, the leadoff man on. See if this triggers a rally for the Padres. They need four. Only the third hit off go down. Well, multiple base runners, and then somebody run into one possibly, but that's a good way to start. Back that ball up nicely, goes right back up the middle. Headley has doubled in a run and struck out. Struck out with men at first and third, and only one out. In the third, Padres having a chance to take the lead. But he struck out, and so did Quinton after the double by O'Sullivan. Slicing toward the crowd in the left field corner, and we'll make it back a few rows. Tony, I was talking to you earlier about uh, being injured and then going on a rehab assignment. You didn't do too much of that, did you? Early on in my career, a couple of times I got hurt. They sent me out to Vegas and uh, different places, but you know, I always felt like, why? Because I'm going to hit major league pitching, so going to Triple A sometimes it wasn't the best thing. I thought. Go ahead and face these regular guys. Right. And hopefully, they help you get back on track a little quicker. Quinton on deck. The Padres aren't scoring many runs, and in part because they haven't been able to get that opening hitter on base to start an inning. Amarista has done that, and now the count three and two to Headley. In fact. Uh, Amarista to single makes it only the fourth time in the last 24 innings. The leadoff man is reached safely. Send the runner three and two here. Maybe not. No. Ooh. All four. Well, the Padres. For the first time since the first inning, have two men on. Check that they didn't have a double. Of Sullivan, oh, Sullivan's double, and Amarista's a walk in the third. Now a single and a walk. First time they've had the first two men in an inning aboard. And that bodes well. One swing and they're right back in the game. Well, here's your guy. He likes to swing early. Even at the first pitch breaking ball. Very aggressive early in the count for Carlos Quinn. Let's see how long Boach is going to go with Gaudan, too, because you know, the pitch count is in a good position right now, 79. Giants just got some action going in their bullpen. He does come out swinging. Yes, he does. Got the double barrel going. Jose Mijares, the left hander on the right. Jake Dunning, the right hander on the left. One out, two on, five one Giants. Home half of the sixth. They got a pretty good fastball. 92 on that one. Going after that pitch was low. Alonzo on deck. Yonder and 
Chet Jerko returning to the lineup off the injured list. Alonso is grounded out and popped up, and Jerko is grounded out and struck out as they return. Two balls and two strikes to the Padres cleanup man. Hitting coach Phil Plantier there with Cabrera. So it has kind of, I don't want to say a true quick pitch, but a quick set, and then he's done that a few times yeah. tonight. He's, he's, he's sneaky. His fastball gets up on you a whole lot quicker than. The velocity says it will. You know, 91, 92 has been enough to get in on on the hitters and give the Padre guys a little bit, you know, tough look at hitting the fastball. Three and two now to Quentin. Says it it gets in on you soon. And you think that is that because you don't pick up the ball out of his hand? He hides the ball well, and, and you know, somebody said it earlier tonight. Galdon's not the tallest guy. You know, six foot. Five ten, actually. Five ten. You don't see many guys, you know, that small. And, and he likes to work the fast. He likes to ride the fastball up in his own. So three and two to Quinton with two on, no one out. Ball four. The bases are loaded. And here comes Bruce Bochy. Slow walk to the mound. He's got a right hander and a left hander getting ready in the bullpen. Yonder Alonso is the hitter, so he's going to go to the southpaw. Miharis. As the Padres, for the first time tonight, have a serious inning underway thanks to the wildness of Godin. A single and a couple of walks. Bases loaded, no one out. Padres trail by four. Our game and on Wednesday, it's the opening day at beautiful Del Mar and Fox Sports San Diego is going to be there in the paddock to cover all the action, the color, the pageantry, the people, and the horses. Don't miss that. Opening day, Del Mar's biggest race day of the season. It's coming up on Wednesday, 12:30, right here on Fox Sports San Diego. Oh, there was uh, the biggest scramble, the biggest fight I've seen at Fox Sports San Diego. Who's going to get to go to Del Mar Wednesday? Oh. And Palmerans wins again. You know, he's going out there again. Uh, it's hard to figure out. I thought maybe they he, might tap us on the show. He, he he must know somebody. Yonder Alonso. It would be a great time to come back to the club after. Being injured for five weeks with that fractured hand and come up with a big base hit. Bases loaded, no one out. Facing Miharis, the veteran lefty. 
High fly ball back to short. Crawford has the first down. Padres with runners in scoring position tonight are 0 for 5. Got in on a little bit. Yep. Uh, down by the label there. You know, and of course it doesn't look good right now swinging at the first pitch with a reliever coming in. Here's Jed Jerko. Jerko against Lodan grounded out and struck out. Goes around. Jed with eight home runs, 17 doubles. Oh, one, two. Spins a slow curveball in there. Venable on deck. Goes around again on a high fastball. Couldn't check. So base is loaded, no one out, and in comes Maharis. And on four pitches, Alonso has popped up and Jerko strikes out. Well, Miharis is a three pitch pitcher, fastball, change, slider, up the ladder. There's a little sweeper going soft and going right back to pitch number one. Bookends, high fastballs for the strikeout. Krista Norfia will bat for Will Venable. But Black making the Switch here to bring up the right handed batter who's had good success against lefties all season long. Infield now can play deep at all positions as the Padres, after getting a single and two walks to load the bases with no one out, now they're going to need a base hit to score. Denorfi is one for ten as a pinch hitter. Two seventy average on the season. Hitting 333 with runners in scoring position. All six of his homers against left handers. That's the swing, but no contact on the off speed. This year, with the bases loaded, Denorfio 0 for 3. But, uh, in his career, has had good success. But down on the count, two strikes. And Harris can get it up there in a hurry. Yes. 94 on that last fastball. Bases loaded, 1 and 2. Low curveball strikes him out. What a job by Maharis. And Harris base is loaded, no one out. Strikes out two and pops up Alonzo. And the Padres come up empty.
Sweeney, Mike Pomeranz with you. Five to one Giants right now, top of the seventh inning. Sean O'Sullivan gets himself a big league start and by and large, probably a B letter grade, would you say? Yeah, I thought he did an outstanding job today. He mixed some pitches, he threw that big breaking ball, he spotted some fastballs, he had a good changeup going tonight. But I thought offensively they didn't give him too much. Great double play right here. But offensively it's been a challenge for the Padres. When we see in the postgame show we'll also have our instructional on how to execute the hit and run. And you'll hear from Buddy Black. Plus the guy and gal who make the PCL jerseys you're seeing tonight on the Padres. So we'll see after the final out. All right Mark and Mike. Now the Padres to follow up on Mark Sweeney's point had first and third and only one out in the third but Headley and Quinton struck out and then they get the bases loaded here in the sixth inning and unable to score a single run as Maharis comes in and just slams the door in their face. Brad Brock got the final out in the sixth inning when the Giants built their lead to 5 1 with three runs struck out Papo Sandoval so it's Pence Belt and Tanaka in the seventh. Denorfia stays in the game. Right field. One ball, two strikes to Pence. He's lined to short, fly to center, and struck out. Blanco's. And the tough guy on the Padres again tonight. He had three hits last night. He scored three times tonight. Walking twice, scored both times. Infield hit, scored in the third as well. There's a base hit up the middle. So Pence joins the lineup. Everyone with a base hit tonight except the pitcher. Well, it's got to be shutdown mode for these Padre pitchers. Cannot allow any more base runners, any more runs. Got to keep it in slam range, and Pence fights off a high fastball in. It looked like Cabrera was playing him straight away short, or maybe a little bit on the pull side. Bell a single in three trips, struck out twice. There goes Pence. Throw by Hundley into center field again. Backed up by Amarista. Pence, who leads the team. In steals has his 14th. Big jump by Pence. Yeah. And Hundley wasn't going to throw him out, I think, even with a perfect throw. And Brett Brock, Brett Brock uses the regular leg kick, trying to be quick to home plate, but a lot of elbows, knees, arm swing there, allowing Pence to get to second base. Pence can't find the ball until the last second there. Cabrera keeping the glove, glove on him on as if he yeah. had the ball. The Another hidden ball trick. Another <laughs> reason for him to stay on the bag. We're talking about runners in scoring position. The last three games, the opposition seemingly having men at second and third almost every inning. And here we go again. Since the first inning, the Giants have had a runner in scoring position six straight. First inning seemed like it was last week. The seventh inning already. I fly ball might stay in fair territory. Quentin over to the line and makes the catch in foul territory, and the runner has to hold. Freeze cam. That's it. Brought to you by Frost Road Coors Light. <laughs> the ball in which Sandoval and Crawford Crawford trying to call for it. He bumps the umpire Timmons, so he doesn't catch it. Timmons. Called it foul. Many thought it fair. It all worked out. Amrista eventually walked, which would have given the Padres the same situation, even if Timmons had called the pop fly fair. It mattered not. The Padres did not score. They had first and third in that inning and one out. Tanaka has done a good job since called up this week. He's now had 14 at bats with five hits. Scored a run tonight. Oh, those Japanese players can all bunt. There's a base hit. 
When you want to talk fundamentals, you better have them in spades if you're playing in Japan or you don't play. Well, that's a perfect point right there. Not exactly what you're looking for a man on second one out, but Tanaka gets the perfect pitch, drops it in the perfect spot for a base hit. Well, bunt single, he's two for three with a walk. Moves the runner over to third, first and third. One out to Brandon Crawford. He has a couple of hits, a single and a double. Giants now with 11 hits tonight. They racked up a dozen last night. So they come down here to Pico Park and breaking out of their one month slump. But just as Tanaka put that butt down, I was about to say, if I'm a pitcher, I'm pitching him up in the zone. He's not going to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Up and away, give him the fly ball left field. He just did nice back control there, putting that ball down the third base line. I think a good fastball pitcher like Brad Brock just knocked the bat right out of his hands. Andres Torres has a bat in the on deck circle. The pitcher spot due next. One out, runners at the corners for the Giants. That's a breaking ball for a strike. Well, actually, a riding fastball had a lot of movement. Off the plate inside. Pence with a single and a stolen base. Moves to third on the bunt single by Tanaka. Look out. Uh oh. Wild pitch. Here comes the runner from third. Penn scores. It's six to one. Tanaka moves to second. As Brock yanks one, and the Giants have scored again. You know, we talk about location of the fastball, talk about location of breaking balls there. He wanted it in, just yanked it. That's a big run for the Gigantes. And they move another man into scoring position. Tanaka up 90 feet to second base, way outside, and three and one now to Crawford. You know, these are big opportunities for these young pitchers coming yeah. up from Tucson. You, they got to show manager Bud Black that they can get guys out or they're going to go back to the PCL. And he walks Crawford. The walks have really hurt the Padres tonight. Three of the runs, men who were put on base with a walk, and here comes the pitching coach on a jog out to talk to. Young Brad Brock. You know, interesting little nugget here. I just thought of this as Darren Balsey was trotting out to the mound. Did you know that it's an unwritten rule? But Darren Balsey told me this, and he learned very quickly when he was first big league pitching coach. It's an unwritten rule for pitching coaches to run to the mound and back. Because one of the first times Darren Balsey walked to the mound, Joe West got in his ear, hey, let's go, move it on, pitching coach. Your job is to run out and run back in. If the manager wants to make a change, he can walk out if he likes. But I, that he, Darren told me that's one of the unwritten rules. As pitching coach, you're supposed to run out there. A lot of guys choose to go the yeah, other I way. I was going to say, yeah. Lots of guys. Another one that pops out of the glove of Hundley, and they got the runners in an awkward position. Both runners are waiting for the other to make a move and now the high throw and they finally make the tag at second base. Oh, no. And now they're going to call obstruction by on the Padres. Second base umpire Laz Diaz in the rundown says that the Padres interfered with the progress of the runner even though he was a dead duck. Look you got all the outfielders in on this argument too. So the runner 
caught between second and third is awarded third base. And uh, what else can go wrong is the posture of the Padre manager. Yeah, he. It was a time to be thrown out. You got to battle for your team, and the things are going this way, and a routine rundown play, and you don't get an out. Let's see exactly what happened here. Both runners are caught between their respective bases. Now they go for the lead runner. He's all the way on the infield yeah. grass. He's two steps on the infield yeah, well. grass, and they called it against the Padres. What what is Jerko supposed to do? Run into the dugout? That's ridiculous. There's no question Headley ran up his back, but oh, Tanaka yeah. is on the infield grass. Right. He's not on the dirt. And what Laz Diaz is saying. High pop fly by the pinch hitter Andres Torres back out of play. I think what Laz Diaz is saying is once that runner committed to go back to third, that's when he ran into him, and that's when he's awarded third base, according to the umpire's judgment. Mm -hmm. if, if that's the case, if you're in a rundown and you feel the, the uh, infielder behind you, turn and run into him, and then you get the call. Well, if he's in your way. Well, if he's on your back, he's in the way. There's a line drive by Torres, the pinch hitter. That'll score another run. And the Giants with two more here in the seventh inning. Continue to build their lead. Seven to one. Rick Renteria is now the acting manager. So That's about middle of the plate. Yeah, and get back to that play. I'm guessing if, if you're a runner and you run into a position player, you don't have the ball, you're not going for the tag. I, 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 I can't figure that one. I, I mean, look where Tanaka is. He's on the in, he's on the grass. He's, right. he's not in the baseline. He's on the grass. And you see Jerko saying the same thing. You had three, all the three outfielders coming in saying the same thing. Now, I, you know, maybe because he, like you said, but he had stopped and was committing to go back towards third base. And Headley no longer has the and ball. Headley no longer had the ball. Okay. But he's not in the baseline. Right. So normally, when you run out of the baseline, you're out. They call you out. And he was surely a, a good uh, 12, 15 feet out, out of the baseline. baseline. And normally, they would call you out in that situation, regardless of whether you had the ball or not. You're that, out of the baseline. You're out. That that is the right in terms of the fairness of the play. That right. is the right call. Right. That man should not be safe on that run. Right. He should be out. But on the technicality, you know, indeed, Headley was behind him. He did. I'd be, interested. I'd be interested to hear what, what Laz would have to say on that. Laz Diaz. Uh, umpire. Meanwhile, the Giants continue to build a bigger and bigger lead. Blanco hits that one by the mound. Watch out. Don't hit a. <laughs> don't don't run into that uh, advancing runner and uh, have another. Play called. They get the force. Blanco safe. Still only two outs in the inning and Scooter of the batter with runners at first and third. Torres out four six. Scudero, a man who often collects multi-hit games. He has 32 of them this year. That's fourth best in the National League is Tanaka, who has scored and able to get the call. That ball into the crowd off the bat of Scudero. The Giants, it was a 1 1 title of fifth. They got one in the fifth, three in the sixth, two more here in the seventh. And runners at the corners for Scudero. Brock is well pitched in a run in the inning. Inning kept alive by the obstruction call by Las Diaz. The inning should be over.
One and two now to Scudero. Everybody in the lineup, including the ninth spot, towards the pinch hitter with a base hit. Scudero, Tanaka, Crawford with a pair. Sharply hit up the middle. That'll bring in the third run of the inning. Crawford jogs in from third. Scudero has hit. Knocked in another. He's got a couple of RBIs and three for four tonight. Obstruction is the act of a fielder who, while in not in possession of the ball and not in the act of fielding, gets in the way of a runner. Obstructs a runner from taking a base. So that's what Laz Diaz is trying to explain. Headley was out of the play. He committed back to third base. Unfortunately, Headley was in the way of the runner. Therefore, obstruction is called according to the rules. But isn't there a rule that would override that that says the runner must be at least in the base path, a reasonable if the runner can create his own running path on the way back to the bag, trying to avoid attack if he stays within that three foot range. Well, he's, he was 15 feet. I don't know if it was that far. <laughs> how about 12 feet? <laughs> well, let's take another look. We have the technology. I mean, how much? I mean, what, what if he ran over to first base and Headley followed him and he turned and hit him? Would well, that be he, obstruction? If, well, if he touched second base and went back to first, he passed that runner, he'd be out. Well, I'm just saying he could run around the infield then and, and, and until you like a well if, if he's avoiding attack then it'd be out. No, I mean the infield grass just keep running around yeah. until somebody gets on your back and then you turn into him. Then it's obstruction. <laughs> you see where Tanaka is right there. I mean he's he's on the grass. You see Headley doesn't have the ball anymore. Right. And I think that's what Laz is, yeah. Diaz is seeing is that Headley doesn't have the ball. He's trying to stop to go back to third. But he's out of the baseline, and that she should have been out because he was out of the baseline. Meanwhile, eight men have come to bat here, and Buster Posey up with runners at first and second. Three runs are home. There's the Giants now abusing the Padre bullpen. Stauffer gave up three runs in two thirds, and now Brock has given up three. And the count full to Posey. Hey, the rule book's good reading. For insomnia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's such a tough test. Line drive Posey. Man, what a swing. That'll get one in, maybe two more. Yep, they're going to wave home Scudero. He scores. Uh, Posey with a five RBI night. And the Giants now lead 10 to 1. His two run single in the six and this two run double man both right on the nose. Nice swing by Posey all fields huh. Blanco and Scudero scoring on the double and quite a night for the all star Buster Posey and the Giants have hit around the ninth man of the inning Sandoval coming up acting manager Rick Renteria making a pitching change.
Sports San Diego brought to you by Sequan. Real friendly, real close. By Pacifico Beer, discovered in Baja, imported by surfers. And by the Aramco Group, purchase, refinance, reverse. Double switch here as Jesus Guzman goes into the game in right field. Zenorfia comes out, so Guzman will bat second in the bottom of the seventh inning, and Luke Gregerson comes in out of the pen. So the Giants breaking out tonight, seven hits with runners in scoring position, and they built their lead to 10 to 1. Ninth man to bat. Troy Vincent, rather. He is the pitcher. Vincent is celebrating his birthday uh, today and tonight. He gets a chance to pitch. A couple of local kids, huh? One from Ramona and starting this game, Shona Sullivan from El Cajon. Nicely done. Nick Vincent is 27. He enters the game with Posey at second base. Five runs in in the inning, and Pablo Sandoval the batter. Padre scored first in the first inning, but it's been all giant since. John O'Sullivan solid for five innings, gave up two runs on six hits. The San Diego native, and now. Nick Vincent try to get the final out of the seventh inning. It's been a while. Two and one. It all started. Single by Hunter Pence after Belt fouled out. A bunt single by Tanaka. Brandon Crawford walked. Run scored on a wild pitch. Andres Torres singled in a run as a pinch hitter. Blanco safe on a fielder's choice. Scudero singled in a run. Posey doubled in two. Five RBIs for the Giants catcher. You know, Tony, we've all been there. It's it just stinks when the wheels come off. Yep. I don't like you can do. No. Nope. Two and two. And he hits Sandoval. Mm, he's acting like that. Really hurts it. Might have got him in the wrist the way he's flexing his hand. And those are always dangerous. Just ask Yonder Alonso. That's the kind of pitch that put him on the shelf for five weeks. That was a slider in. Trying to tie him up and right on the tip of the elbow. elbow. Yep. Sometimes when you get there, the so called funny, funny bone, bone. I yeah. don't know whoever called it that. Nothing but funny you just, about it. No, right. it just numbs. Right. Feels funny if you can't feel anything. I see if Sandoval is going to be able to continue. Yep, he's going to walk the first. So Sandoval joins Posey aboard, and the man who started this five run inning, Hunter Pence, comes up. Actually, the proper term for the funny bone is the ulnar nerve in the elbow. I just want to go back to the derivation of whoever decided it was the funny bone. You're working it over over there. They don't Google, I can smell it. I'm just burning <laughs> it up. <laughs> 
Two on, two out. Pence. Fly ball to right. Guzman turned the wrong way, but able to collect the final out. Ten men bat. And the Giants have ten runs. We go to the bottom of the seventh. to come enjoying their fedoras and we'll be back with you tomorrow night 6 30 our Fox Sports San Diego start time for Padres live Volquez looks for a seventh win of the season Edinson will be matched up against right hander Tim Lincecum Lincecum of the Giants and off season is four and nine and you fans uh, first twenty five thousand of you will receive a Padres cell phone cover. Hope to have you out here at the ball yard. If not, we'll be with you here in Fox Sports San Diego at 6:30. Just to complete the scoring in the last inning, Headley is given an error for the obstruction, so that makes only one of the runs earned. So Brock's line is one inning, five runs, one earned, five hits, one walk, one strikeout. Blanco stays in the game and moves to left field. Torres enters the game in center field and the new pitcher is Jake Dunning. Boy, was it only an inning ago that Maharas was in here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Goodness, that must have been about a 45 minute half inning. Hey, pretty good numbers for the right hander, Jake Dunning. Opponents only hitting 176. Not fun for the hitters pitching or hitting against this right hander, always working from the stretch. Harris with the bases loaded, no one out in a game that was still within reach, a swing away from a tie game with the bases loaded, comes in and gets Alonzo Jerko and Denorfia, no run score, and then the Giants just the dam broke in the top of the seventh. And Dick, just to button up that story about the funny bone, it's really a nerve at the elbow, the end of the humorous bone, which is pronounced humorous. Humorous also means funny, hence the name funny bone. H U M E R U S bone humorous. Very good. Mr. Grant, we appreciate your research. <laughs> you can write a paper on it tomorrow. <laughs> well, that's a good piece of trivia. Hundley, Guzman, and Cabrera to face Dunning. Nick is. Flight out and grounded out. Fouled at the plate. Count goes three and two. Padres with only three knocks. Amarista with a single, Headley a double, and the starting pitcher, 
Sean O'Sullivan double. Wide of third, Sandoval ranging in front of the shortstop to throw out Hundley. Big man can cover some ground, Sandoval. He sure can. He's very athletic over there. I like his footwork on that. He really, yeah. You know, he cut that ball off. He still set his feet. Made a strong throw to first base. One other change for the Giants at second base. Nick Noonan has come into play. He's a San Diegan. Roger cut this ball off going straight across, but yet he sets his feet. Strong throw. Guzman batting for the first time, hitting in the pitcher spot. Former Giant property. On the corner, slider. So the infield, Sandoval, Crawford on the left side, Noonan and Belt on the right side. There's Nick. Went to high school here in San Diego. And Francis Parker High School. Blanco in left. Torres in center. Pence in right. Soft ground ball to Sandoval. And he takes care of business. Two away. Well, the hitting stars for the Giants tonight, no surprise, the two men going to the All Star game Scooter Owen Posey. Tony, did the All Star game ever get old? No, never did. First one where you're like in awe? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And how many before you felt, eh, still excited, but hey, it's going to be my yeah, like 10. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I look forward to going. If I made it, I was going. Cabrera, watch out. That's a wicked foul back behind the third base dugout. So, Scudero and Posey. Scudero, three hits and a walk. Knocked in two, scored one. Posey, five RBIs. On a two run single, a two run double, and a sacrifice fly. Watch out, the Giants are starting to hit again. 12 last night, 14 tonight. One of my favorite All Star stories our good friend, Gary Templeton. He's with the Cardinals when he wasn't selected, but he was going to be an extra. Mm -hmm. And his famous words were, "If I ain't starting, I ain't departing." Do you remember that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he got a lot of play of that in the press. <laughs> Two and one, Cabrera. No. Two balls and two strikes. Mike Winters thought it was his strike. See, like I told you, right on the black. <laughs> Line drive, base hit, Cabrera. Solid single. The fourth hit of the night for San Diego. And that'll bring up Alexi Amarista. Main slider right in the middle of the plate. Backs it up nicely and drives it in the right center field. Amarista's been on base all three at bats, two walks and a single. Scored the Padre run in the first inning after walking. Headley brought him home and the Padres had a short live one nothing lead. And there's a base hit to left field. Not hit hard, but punches that one over shortstop Crawford's head and Amarista on base four times tonight. Cabrera to second. Chase Headley comes up. That's ball tail in a way. He gets that right off the end, really. Just flips it in the left field for a big hit. But that's a nice reward for Amarista, not over swinging. You know, last year he was swinging out of his shoes every at bat, and now he seems to be much more in control of his swing, Tony. 
What where he's hitting in the lineup? That's that, as a number two guy batting behind a guy who could run. Uh, that's that's really what he should be doing. You know, shortening his throat, getting a good pitch to hit, giving Cabrera a chance to maybe steal a bag. You know, obviously it's not going to happen in this game now, ten to one. But Headley takes strike one. Runner in scoring position, Cabrera. The Padres are 0 for 7 tonight. Oh one two, changeup. That's a good one from Dunning, huh? Seems like Chase is getting a lot of changeup, a lot of off-speed stuff. And yeah, sliders down and in. Yep. Struck him out. Three pitches. Padres leave two. We go to the eighth. Ten one. Giants. You got a sacrifice fly to tie the game at one Posey then a two run single that was in the sixth inning and in the game of can you top this how about a two run double ripped into the left field corner five runs batted in Buster Posey he boosts his total on the season to 56 leading the team our Carl's Jr. star of the game Logan Forsyth makes an appearance in left field. Carlos Quinton now. Quinton would have been the leadoff hitter in the bottom half of this inning, the eighth. Nick Vincent back to work. Belt, Tanaka, Crawford. Uh, Tanaka's out now. It's uh, Nick Noonan then in that second, in the seventh spot. Playing without their manager Bud Black ejected from the game, arguing in the sixth inning on that obstruction play. And Rick Renteria calling the shots. How many games did you get kicked out of Tony? Two. Both Four. on uh, called strikes? One was a called a check swing. Strike three. Which you probably went, but go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> would have been a double. Yeah, Mark would have been calling me out. And uh, the other one was a uh, Joe West was behind oh, the Oh, that's blade. a shocker. But go ahead. Your story? Ball bounced. He called it a strike. Really? Yeah. And. Uh, Did you think it was cricket or what? I said, I said, hey, Joe, that ball bounced. And he basically told me to get my behind in the box. Ooh. And it was on. After what, that, what year was that? This was uh, Larry Bowe was a manager, '86. Oh, okay. I think it was. So you've been in the league for 
Yeah. What, five years already? Yeah, that was Four my years. first one. The next one was in L.A. Jerry Lane threw me out. And that was it. My mom said I was looking stupid on TV, so <laughs> I didn't argue anymore. Got to listen to mom. Yeah. There you go. Three and two now as Vincent working on belt. Singled his first time, struck out twice and fouled out. Ten runs, 14 hits for the Gigantics. Dick, when, when you were coaching at San Fernando, uh, San Fernando Valley State, did you ever get ejected? Just once. Really? Call it second base. Tell me about it. Well, I ran out there and I said some words I shouldn't have said. <laughs> <laughs> that usually gets you in trouble. Yeah, right that, there. yeah. yeah. That's, I didn't even know those words were in there, but I—that's <laughs> what happens. You know, these umpires bring them out. Another foul. Harder when you're coaching, because like that play, the NXB obstruction play. You know, you, you got to know the rules on the fly. You can't. You don't yeah. have time to go to the rule book. And right. And that was a tough one. Three and two again, and another foul by Belt. You know that's why in spring training. When you work on rundowns as a fielder, once you get rid of that ball, you yep. got to peel out. Yep. You know. Well, you, he was trying to. Right. He just took the wrong turn. He was right. going inside on the grassy part. If he'd gone to the dirt side, then I would have been able to buy the argument that he obstructed. But he was going, trying to bail out on the grass side, and Tanaka was on the turf. And Belt takes strike three. Three strikeouts tonight. Brandon Bell, who has struck out more than any giant. Backdoor cutter or slider. Call it what you want. Call it a call third strike. Nick Noonan, his first at bat. Did not go. Ball nicely stopped by Alonzo, and they get the put out 3 1. Well, hit by Noonan. It's a star here at Francis Parker High School, and the 32nd pick overall by the Giants. Hit the ball hard. Good play, Alonzo. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the San Diego Padres and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form of the account descriptions of this game. May not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. Wouldn't be one of those speed readers for those commercials that you know, where they had Evelyn they Wood. Had, yeah, they have about 20 lines of copy, but the you know, announcer goes through right. in about 10 seconds. Choose them up. Don't you remember the Evelyn Wood speed reading course? <laughs> oh yeah. Advertised on TV back in like the 70s. <laughs> two outs to Brandon Crawford. Two hits and a walk tonight, and a couple of runs scored. And hitting eight. Vincent now has retired the three men he's faced. 27th birthday. Many feel that, uh, in especially baseball, but a lot of sports, that's right at the peak, the prime of your, your career. He's a Bay Area guy, Crawford. His uh, dad was a Giants season ticket holder. He rips that one into right field, into the corner, and off the top of the wall, Crawford into second base with his third hit of the night. As he ropes one right at the foul pole, and that one almost went in. And the hit parade continues. You see Nick Humley's glove down and in. Right off the Taylor made. Right at the top of it. Right in that general area. 
Just about three feet shy of yeah. his sixth home run. Scudero and now Crawford with three hits each. To pace this giant attack of 15 hits and 10 runs. Torres entered the game as a pinch hitter in the seventh inning and singled in a run. Crooked numbers for the visiting team. Two out double for Crawford here in the eighth inning. Kane without the cap. Very Zito. He'll be pitching Sunday afternoon. San Diego High School product. Lincecum gets the start tomorrow night. Well, he still looks like he's 18, doesn't he? Yep. That kid does not age. Looks even younger with, with the haircut. Yeah. yeah. By the way, how many, I mean, how many local products we got here tonight? O'Sullivan, Noonan, Vincent, Zito, Vincent, Quentin. Hot bed of baseball talent. You did say Nick Noonan. I did. Yep. Outside and three and one now to Torres. Well, sometimes when you're having trouble picking up wins, a loss like this where you you really get beat instead of a three-two or a four-three or yeah. a last night a four-two, the night before five-four, it's kind of washes things away. You know, you it's flush, like a purging. You right? flush it out. Yeah. Right? Sometimes you're the car, sometimes you're the rabbit trying to cross the road. Right? You got to score runs. When they win, you got to score. And they scored the first inning last night and the first inning tonight. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Nick Vincent with a couple of strikeouts in the eighth inning. Padres come up, needing nine. By Mossy Toyota. Summer temps are higher, but Mossy's prices are lower. Visit Mossy.com. By Petco, where the healthy pets go. And by your San Diego County Lexus dealer, who invites you to test drive a luxurious Lexus automobile tomorrow. And back at Petco Park, bottom of the eighth inning, a new pitcher, Gene Machi. 
And a new catcher, Guillermo Quiros. As Bruce Bochy giving some of his regulars a break with a 10 1 lead in hand. Bochy just uh, activated. We saw him earlier in the year, hard throwing right hander. Three pitch pitcher, fastball split. That's his secondary pitch, that split finger. And a slider, 90 to 96 on the fastball. They've been the minor leagues for a long time. Machi, who is 31 years of age, didn't get to the big leagues till last year, came up with San Francisco for eight games. Originally signed by the Phils way back in 2000. Up and down. To Fresno, the Triple A team. And now back with the Giants. Logan Forsyth will lead it off. Getting in Carlos Quinton's spot. Quinton was 0 for 2 with the walk tonight. 94 with the fastball. You wonder, you see a man like this and now 31 and throws that hard, and why he wouldn't have made it to the major league sooner. Maybe he's gotten to the point because when you look at his numbers, very few walks, five walks. And maybe he has found something in his delivery, more consistent with the delivery, the arm slot to where he's around the plate. And, and, and guys, there there comes a point in a guy's career also where they might say to themselves, you know, what do I got to lose? Yeah. I'm going to change it up a little bit. Now, most of the time, guys get in situations like here just because of command. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it takes a while to kind of get to that point where you can command the pitches you need to command. And usually when that happens, you usually get the opportunity. Strikes out for side. High splitter. One away here in the eighth. Houston Street. Loosening up in the bullpen for the Padres. Well, there comes a time where you have to stay sharp. You do what you can in the bullpen before ball games. Long toss, and it might just be a game like this where Houston Street gets an inning of work. Yeah, there was so much hope tonight with a sellout crowd and Alonso returning and Jerko coming back out of the injury barrel. But the Giants have spoiled the fun. Ten to one they lead. Alonso and Jerko collectively are 0 for six. And you just can't expect them to come back and hit the way they were. And the rehab assignment, and as you pointed out, Tony Gwen, you got to give them a few games here to get back in the groove. Yeah, it'll take a little bit. But. Back to the mound. Two away. Well, two final games of this homestand and the pre All Star activity tomorrow night at 6 30 on Fox Sports San Diego, Tim Lincecum. Against Edinson Volquez, two men with high ERAs. Eddie trying to level his record at seven and seven. And Sunday afternoon at 12:30, Barry Zito, four and six for the Giants against Eric Stoltz, who will look for his eighth win of the year. Chet Jerko has struck out twice and grounded to third. Quickly, Machi ahead, two strikes. You know, I've never seen Machi pitch when he was younger, right? So maybe he was a more violent pitcher at that time too, with his delivery. But he looks pretty smooth, right? Yep. Right now, and under control. That ball hit long way, but way fouled into the second deck. Looks like he's smooth and easy with his delivery, and therefore allowing his arm to get in the correct slot to be consistent around the plate.
Jerko went after a couple of those high fastballs the last time up when he struck out. So Kiros, the catcher, trying to coax his pitcher to throw one up there, see if he could get him to go again. One and two. Just off the head of the bat. Arizona has defeated Milwaukee tonight 2 1. Colorado has shut out the Dodgers 3 0. Line drive, shortstop Crawford. Jerko not rewarded for putting a good swing on that one. Lines it out, Crawford's gone in the eighth. for Bud Black's club and I had a chance to talk to Houston the other day said he's feeling a lot better about his slider and I said going into the break though how do you work on things what do you decide to do and he said it all depends on how much work he gets in in these few games leading up to the break and Mark Grant I'm sure you can attest to that but really when it comes to pitches like the slider Houston said it's all about the feel and certainly he's a guy who puts his work in so how important is it over the break that he continues to do that good question Kelly and Everybody is different, but it's all about touching and feel that baseball getting in that arm slot and staying consistent with it. No pitcher out there and Tony. I know you've talked to pitchers as well. And Dick being around the game. You talked to guys like Don Drysdale guys have the routines over the break. Believe me. They might go on a little vacation a little getaway, but they're going to play some catch with someone. They're going to they're going to still get that feel of the baseball to get that rotation and that muscle memory. So when they start back up in St. Louis, they're not going to miss a beat. They're going to still work out a little bit. They might even throw a pen. So good question. Now some might be asking why would Houston Street the closer come into a 10 1 game. Well he hasn't pitched since Monday. And so just just a matter of giving him some some work here. Sure. In this game tonight. He'll face Blanco. Then the pitcher spot Machi. Hitting second now. And Kiros. Is in the third spot, the Posey spot. And apparently, uh, Gene Machi is going to hit. He's in the on deck circle. Blanco, he's been a pest after flying out in the first inning. Infield hit, walk, walk, and safe on a fielder's choice. He scored four runs tonight. He had three hits and scored a run last night. One and one. One and two now.
Tony, what did you? Well, I, I just take you that. Say, what was that doing during the break? Yeah. <laughs> playing in the All Star. When I game. wasn't playing in the All Star game, I was you, working out, like you said. Yeah. I mean, I remember you after games going to the batting cage. Oh yeah. And working out because you, you were especially like a night like tonight yeah. where you know you're struggling offensively and sometimes you kind of want to get that thought, that mental thought that you have out of your mind before you come here tomorrow. So, yeah, I would go in the cage. Take a little adrenaline yep. out, huh? Yep. When guys go to the weight room or, you know, I go to the training room, I would go to the cage. And if Merv, Merv Rettman wasn't in a hurry, I'd drag him up there, too, <laughs> and make him watch. And, uh, yeah, because nobody wants to struggle, you know, and I don't care how much time you have or how much success you've had. Uh, you know, nobody wants to go out there every day and trying to find it. And it's like I said, I came here early today, and there's a group of about eight guys taking some early batting practice. Yeah. That one skids just wide of first base. Well played down the right field corner. Our ball girls have been perfect with the glove tonight. It looks like that's uh, Catalina down there. Does a fine job. Two and two. Gregor Blanco, leadoff man. Fifteen hits and six walks. Equal ten runs. Fouled into the glove of Hundley, strike three. Blanco out. And Machi, the pitcher, will get to swing the bat. That's a good sign. Street hitting his spot perfectly on the outside corner. Machi's first at bat of the season. I'm guessing that's his first major league at bat. It is. Looks like he could uh, borrow Pablo Sandoval's uh, sport coat. <laughs> well, he's going to get his cuts. Got a couple. 0 and 2. You get your hit unless you get you swing. Yep. So a couple of strikeouts for Street to open the ninth inning. That'll bring up Kiros batting for the first time. Well, backup slider looked like a changeup, possibly. Maybe a changeup. No, out of the hand. Looks like a fastball. Should I think of another pitch? <laughs> Knuckleball. <laughs> Houston working on a beard. Kiros has had only 62 at bats, 12 hits, hitting 194. Has a home run this year. When you have a Buster Posey, you're not going to get much uh, action. Except for those days where Boach puts him over at first base. You're not going to get a whole lot of work. Oh, watch out. That one was right back at the bill of the cat. Heroes with a solid single to center. That brings up Sandoval. Mm. Oh, that's scary. Mm. Pablo tonight hit by a pitch, walked. RBI double. Has tapped to the mound and struck out. One for three. Hey, Sandball can't believe he missed that. I was going to say, he's been frustrated all night. He's gotten fastballs. 
you know, in the middle of the plate. He swung through them almost all night long tonight. He can't believe that he's missing them. And the count two strikes on Sandoval. Streets a pitch away from striking out the side here in the ninth. A wild pitch off the ground and then off the mask of Hundley that moves Kiros to second base. It's actually not a bad pitch because I've seen Sandoval swing at pitches like that before. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> You've seen it too. And like cricket, if it bounces once and you hit it, it's in play. Yes, it is. Shot to right field. Kiros will hold at third base on a solid single by Sandoval. So he has his second hit tonight. And the Giants, eight of the nine innings, have had a man in scoring position. It's going to be a feel good clubhouse tonight. Everyone's been in the act. Hey, Tony, did you notice something there? Dick, you might have noticed also with the score being 10 to 1. See Tim Flannery holding up. You know, I don't want to be running it up, right. especially in the ninth inning here, the nine run lead. You know, that's one of those unwritten rules, also, right? Yep. Well, if you notice on that wild pitch that Chiefs the Street. Through Curls didn't even really want to go to second. He yeah. was he had to think about it for a second just, before he went to second. Well, he could have gone to second on any pitch because uh, Alonso has been playing behind. Exactly. So you don't want to run it up. Tense the batter. He has a one hit. He's breaking up a rally. He only has one hit tonight. In five at, at bats. One hit last night. One for four. He's been struggling. Third time that the Giants have had 17 hits in a game. They're high. Oh and two on Pence. Falling off a pitch well out of the zone. Probably he's going to get another one out there. This now becomes the longest nine inning game of the season. At Petco. Closing in on three hours and 40 minutes. Back in the first week of the season. The Dodgers they had a game. Over three and a half hours. Inning comes to end on the force out. The Giants leave two. Padres come up. Lower third of the order. 10 1 San Francisco.
the lower three in their hitting order. Rene Rivera is going to get a chance to hit. He'll lead off this ninth. Rene was uh, the Pacific Coast League All Star at the catching position. He's going to play in the All Star game when the Pacific Coast League All Stars they play against the International League All Stars. Hit over 340 at Tucson. Solid defensive catcher. He's had a terrific season, been very patient. Funny getting his call up. The injury to Yasmani Grandal. Sweeps that one to short. And there's one away. Lomachi's retired all four men that he has faced. Nick Hundley steps up. A couple of ground outs and a fly ball. 0 for 3 tonight. Yeah, tomorrow night, they'll run it out there again, and Edinson Volquez will try to put a stopper on the, what has suddenly become a very healthy hitting attack for the Giants. 29 hits in two games. Opposing Tim Lincecum. High, high in the air and foul territory off third. Watch out, Pablo. He can't get that one. Into a crowd of Giant fans. The old PCL uniforms didn't bring the Padres any luck tonight, no. did they? Still, they're nice looking. Oh, oh and two. Guzman on deck. Well, the Giants have exploded for 17 hits. The Padres with only five. Cabrera, a single. Amarista, two singles and two walks. He's been the one Padre that's had a good night as Hundley strikes out. Two away. Second strikeout for Machi. Headley had an RBI double. That was back in the first inning for the only Padre run. And the only big hit was Sean O'Sullivan's near home run. The Pitcher his first time up in the third inning rattled one off the left center field fence. Guzman hit in the seventh inning, grounded out, and here's another to the shortstop Crawford. And mercifully, the game comes to an end, and the Giants have defeated the Padres in game two of the series 10 to 1. Let's go to Mike and Mark. Guys, coming up on the postgame show, we're going to have our instructional how to hit and run. Tony Whitmore is going to break that down for you. You'll hear from Buddy Black, who was ejected tonight, and the maker of these PCL jerseys coming up.